I just survived 1,000 days in Minecraft Hardcore, but this world is so much different than any before. Learning from my previous worlds, in July of 2023, I decided to begin the many-year journey of building my dream Minecraft kingdom that will one day span thousands of blocks. Did I mention that I didn't use a totem or elytra at all for these first 1,000 days? So it's safe to say there's some close calls. And with that, I hope you enjoy the full story of my best videos, best builds, and even exclusive content of this world never seen before. So we better get started. The only thing that kind of worries me right now is the early game is so easy for us to die. In fact, it's already happened. This isn't my first attempt in this world. Oh my goodness. And in order to prevent any more deaths, I've come up with a five-step plan to get me totally prepared in this world. To be honest, each of the steps is still pretty dangerous. So we're gonna have to take it very carefully in order to... in order to survive this and build our project for this episode. So I think it's pretty important we get geared up as soon as we possibly can. And if I remember correctly, there should be a village just up here. And this seems like the perfect area to try to get geared up just a little bit. All right, we've got a bit of an upgrade here, but now I just want to show you this incredible seed I've picked out. The area I'm heading towards now is just this huge open plain with mountains in the back, which I'm going to completely transform over the next 1,000 or so days. But there's also tons of other crazy areas in this world I want to tackle too. I mean, wow, this view here is just incredible. One day this area is going to look even cooler now, but we should probably sleep so I don't die, you know? But what we do need to worry about is our first goal, getting at least decent diamond armor and trying to enchant it the best we possibly can. And I'm thinking, why not head up to this mountain where there's just gonna be so much iron. We're walking away from that with well over a stack of iron, and look at what I just found. Another crazy cool terrain area. But right now, let's get back to our base area and try to set up a little bit. Oh no, powdered snow, please, please. Okay, that could have been worse. I think over here, just past the village, is gonna be the perfect spot to set up. And geez, this guy here looks a little dangerous. Let me get rid of him. And yeah, this spot looks great. I mean, that hill might have to go, but we'll worry about that later. <laughs> let's drop down our crafting table furnace. Now we can go ahead and craft up our iron sword, pick axe, axe, shovel, and of course, all of the armor. Okay, with decent enough gear, let's go ahead and dink down and try to form a little bit of a diamond mine. Our mining session was going well. We already found a few diamonds. That was until we ran into an ancient city. Oh, um... <laughs> I was not expecting to do this today, but I'm kind of tempted. I mean, we can find diamond gear here, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it, and I'm probably gonna regret it for the rest of my life, which may be only about two minutes. Gotta take this really careful. Okay, we got a shrieker there. But if I break that shrieker, then maybe we can loot that chest? Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, good. Swift sneak one. I mean, I'll take it. But come on, there's gotta be better loot than that, right? Oh no, there's two. There's two shriekers here, but there's one sensor. So if I take out this sensor, please. Please tell me that if I take this out. Oh, and two more chests we can loot. Efficiency five. Whoa, that is a good book. I am taking that for sure. Okay, let's just, let's just head along here. Will this trigger anything? If I... Here, I think if I break this shrieker, that should disarm everything. Oh no, it definitely did not. I don't like this at all. Two enchanted golden apples in one chest? What the heck? That's crazy. You know what I'm feeling like right now? I'm feeling like we should push our luck. I want to try to find some, maybe some diamond gear and even swift sneak. You know, that'd be kind of cool. All right, I'm feeling pretty good disarming. Oh no, I just stepped on it. Oh, I'm so stupid. That's not good. Ooh, there we go, but that's... Uh, I don't really want Curse of Binding. Dang it. Oh no, I just triggered another one. What am I doing? I know I'm really pushing my luck, but I just want to find something, you know? Okay, here's a chest. Oh no. I'm about to take the biggest risk of my life. If I break this sensor, I think I'll be fine. But oh, what if I'm not? No, let's just go for it. Oh. And now we can... Ooh, nice. We actually got a decent prize out of that. A, a way better swift sneak book and a pair of diamond pants. Perfect. Oh, I got the ward armor trim. Yes. I'm pretty sure this is too far for the sensor to pick up. Oh, no. 
Time to go, time to go, time to go. Time to go, oh no. Eat the apple. And let's get out of here. Just gotta get far enough away from that cavern that he's not gonna see me. So I think we're gonna call it there. At least we got some decent diamond pants. After that near-death experience, I decided to spend the next hour mining diamonds, and I actually got way more than I expected. After a long time of mining, we can go ahead and use these 43 diamonds to upgrade all of our gear. Use our brand new diamond armor and all of our diamond tools. And I actually found the perfect way to enchant all this stuff. If we head over here, you can see that I just came across this, where is it? A skeleton spawner just down here, which I think we can real quick convert into a grinder to get all the XP we're gonna need here. And simple enough, here we go. This is perfect. Absolutely great first enchantment here with this pickaxe. Ooh, that's kind of another good one. Yeah, I think that's a good one actually. I'll keep that. That's just okay. I'll take that though. Ooh, that is exactly what I wanted because we can combine that in a second with our Feather Falling 4 book. Perfect. Got a good enchant for the shovel. All right, helmet time and... Uh, that's not great at all. Okay, I feel like we're enchanted enough to where we'll be slightly safer for the rest of this episode. With our diamond armor finally enchanted, we can move on to phase two of this episode. And what I want to do is collect four different armor trims. We already have this one, and I want to collect three more so we can have a completely custom set of armor. In order to prepare for this, I want to just in case bring along a brush, so which means we're going to need a feather. <clears throat> a feather? Are you kidding me? A feather. Oh, finally. A piece of copper. There it is. And of course we need a stick. And brush. Perfect. We can now grab a boat and begin our journey. Let's see which three armor trims we can come across. Here's a shipwreck. Maybe this could have one. Nothing here. And nothing here. Hold on, there's one more chest. Maybe this one? Oh, there is. We just got our second of four armor trims. That's perfect. I see a desert temple up here. This could possibly have a trim. I sure hope it does. Here we go. Let's disarm all this TNT. I don't want to blow up today. Chest number one. Chest number two. Chest number three. And chest number four. Nothing. Oh, man. Well, looks like we're going to do some more exploring. And for the next 20 minutes, that's exactly what I did. That was until I found oh, wait, this. Wait, what? It's one of these things, yes. As far as I'm aware, it's pretty easy to grab some armor trims from here. So I guess let's just start brushing this all out. Oh, here we go. Here's one already. Perfect. There we go. Ooh, we got the music disc. Sadly, this ruin only ended up having one trim, which is still one less than we need. So time to keep looking. I've been walking for so long and still nothing. Ooh, okay, we got a pillager outpost. That could have one if we're lucky. Oh, of course, we've got to fight waves of mobs just to get up there. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, we got two of them actually, yes. Let's upgrade this armor right now. There we go. That's not bad either. That looks great. But let's get right out of here. This armor trim is looking great, but I think that which gives me the opportunity to move on to phase number three, which is going to be building a pretty powerful iron farm, which is going to supply our world for a very long time. We're going to use like the simplest design ever, designed by ENX before and Lazlin. So let's gather all those materials we need. And the list is surprisingly short. We only need 12 trapdoors, nine signs, eight fence gates, a couple of ladders, slabs, hoppers and a bed. Let's go ahead and build this thing. I'm gonna build it just somewhere in this plane so I can cover it up later with a build. I'm kind of like in this spot here. We need to dig out a 9 by 9 hole like two blocks deep or something. Now we can funnel a whole bunch of water into the center. I need more water. Funnel more water into the center like this. And then grab some fence gates and make a little ring like this. Now we've got to dig a 30 block deep hole. 29, 30. Okay. Let's dig out a small room down here. And then set up our storage system with... Just some hoppers pointing to one little chest. I'll definitely have to expand this later, but it's fine for now. Now we grab our signs and mine our way back to the surface because I forgot lava. There we go. We got some lava in. Now just next to the farm, we need to dig out this little hole here in order to store all of our villagers. I just know they're going to love it down here. I even have two beds. I don't even have a third bed yet. We got to cover this with torches for some reason and then place a boat. Next up, we've got to grab a villager from this village, assuming there's any left. All right. Here's one. Let's see if I can lure him out here. And boom, there we go. Now he should just drop right down the hole. Perfect. And down. Perfect. And last villager is almost there. Come on. No, oh, no. Come back, come back, come back. Uh, go in. And there we go. All three villagers are in. 
We should be pretty good at this point. Maybe iron golems will start spawning, possibly. We'll see. Man, something annoying just happened. My computer ran out of space, so it crashed the game. And then when I rejoined, all of my statistics got deleted, which is annoying and all. But oh well, at least we're in the very start of the game. Let's just hope it never happens again. Anyways, what I was going to do is move on to phase number four, which involves building our starter base. And I kind of want to build it right there. Just one problem with building it right here. There, there's a hill here. I gotta remove it. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna move move this whole hill. This took a, a horrible amount of time to finish, but now we have this amazing flat spot here where we can build our base. Only problem is I added so much detail to this base that there's like a billion different blocks we have to collect just for this little house. So let's start by gathering a bunch of different wood types. Hey, we're in the nether now. We just need to collect a couple of different blocks. Namely, just those two wood types, the warped and the crimson. Unfortunately, we spawned in the one biome that doesn't have either of those. So, looks like we're gonna have to do a bit of journeying here. Jeez, this guy's got a knockback bow. Here we go, let's get some wood. The amount of materials in this build is actually insane, but I collected everything we're gonna need to build our base right up here. If you're wondering how long it took to get to this point, uh, we're on day 100 right now. Yeah, that's right. We've already survived 100 days in this world, which is crazy. And I think to celebrate, the thing we need to do right now is none other than build our starter base. Check it out, this is one of the most detailed builds I've ever done and I'm so happy with how it turned out. Pretty much everywhere you look on this house, there's something somewhat interesting to look at, which I think is really cool. And yep, I even did an entire interior. I wanted to make this kind of like a tavern in kind of thing off the path of the main city, which will be way over there. But we have plenty of open space in here to put all our storage. And then we have this countertop here where we can store our enchanted books. And if you head upstairs, I managed to squeeze in three rooms in here. This small one, we got a pretty large one in here, and then one more in the attic. Will anybody ever see any of this again? Probably not. But am I glad I did it? I sure am glad I did it. Now we gotta move a ton of our stuff into here. Let's start by putting a bunch of our valuables on the wall, like our first wooden pickaxe. We can throw in our skeleton skull and maybe like an armor trim over here or something. For our storage in here, I wanna try to be a bit more creative and maybe make some sort of pile of barrels and chests. Yeah, I mean, stuff like this will work kinda well. Yeah, I like this a lot actually. It turned out really, really cool. And it's definitely a unique way of storing all my stuff in here. Hold on, it's really annoying me how many mobs I'm hearing. Is there a cave? Oh my. Jeez. Oh, okay, that could have been way worse. And all clear and ready for us to start phase five, which is going to be detailing this huge area all around us with a bunch of farms and paths and stuff like that. What we need to do first is head up here and head right back outside to our creative test world. Let's figure out what kind of paths we're gonna be building. Last season we used a combination of mud, mud bricks, and like rooted dirt, but this season, I think for the area, I wanna go for maybe some more stone types. And I was thinking either some sort of stone combination or even granite, but I think I'll just go for a combination of some lighter stones and maybe coarse dirt as well. I think this will turn out nice. So, you know, let's build all that.
I am actually so happy with how these roads turned out. We now have a couple different pathways just winding through this huge plains biome. We're going to transform. There's not much to say other than I just used andesite, stone, gravel, some coarse dirt too. And this path takes us all the way up and over to the village. But this isn't over yet. I want to get as many huge crop fields as I can around this area to get all the crops we're going to need for the rest of the series, hopefully. And this is another very long process, but it's going to look so, so cool if we manage to pull this off correctly. I hopped into free cam real quick to show you the one, two, three, four, and five different fields I planned out, as well as this river in the future. So I think we need to go ahead and turn all of these outlines into some actual, somewhat of fallen down walls. And thanks to all the deep slate we got for mining diamonds, this didn't take that long at all. Okay, we've got all four of these farms built up. Now what I want to do is figure out exactly what I'm going to put in each of them. For this one, I might put those big flower bush thingies. I'm thinking for that one over there might be a big weed field. And I'm not quite sure, probably carrots and potatoes for the other two. But let's get started with this field here by replacing all of the ground with coarse dirt. Yeah, this is pretty much exactly what I was going for. Just this little field here looks great. I think over for this one, I want to do a wheat field, which is going to take such a long time. And seeing as I don't have any wheat seeds, this is going to be nice and easy and not take me long at all. This wheat field honestly turned out great, and I think our next crop is going to be beetroot. I know it's kind of useless, but I still want to have a field for it. Let's put it down here. Once this field grows in, I think it's going to look so great. Next up, I made this absolutely huge potato farm. We'll never ever need this many potatoes, but we'll have them now, at least. And with this field planted, this area is looking really, really cool. I also made a field over here. I just finished this carrot field not too long ago. And overall, I think the environment of this area is really coming together. With such a great start to the world, I decided I wanted to do something big. I'm building a mega nether portal in my Minecraft hardcore world because how are we going to build the ultimate Minecraft kingdom when our portal looks like this? So, we need to upgrade my gear, expand our city, and collect tons of blocks for a huge new ancient build in our world. Welcome back to the hardcore world where today we're going to be building a huge, huge portal. In our last episode, we started all this farming area, built a ton of roads, and so much more, uh, except that left us with a pretty broken pickaxe. And if I want to collect all the different stone types we need for this portal, we're gonna need a fully healed up pickaxe which means there's only one thing we can do we've got to get mending so my first goal here is to kidnap a villager from this village and then build him his very own house where he can trade his mending books and that's gonna allow us to get all the stones we're gonna need for our portal this guy here looks like a pretty good contestant so what we need now is a whole lot of iron go in there a whole lot of iron which we have more than enough it's actually overflowing we can go ahead and craft some rails and a minecart all right buddy we just need to to get this guy to go on the rail. Come on, come on. Oh no, yes, there we go. No, 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 no. Oh my goodness. Don't worry, buddy. We're just kidnapping you and then building you a better house. You should actually be happy about this. Here we go. We got this villager in place. He's pretty far away from the rest of the big cities eventually going to be because he's going to have his own little farmhouse out here next to all the crops we built last episode. I also put him next to this, which is going to be a river. There's going to be a little bit of a mill, a water wheel thingy on the side of the house. So I think that's going to look cool too. He is lucky. I'm not in as nice of a house as he is. I mean, my house is pretty nice, but I'll still build him something so he doesn't get attacked by mobs look at that perfect he's gonna love it in there i also gotta cover this up so zombies don't get him sorry buddy our very first material on the list is going to be warped wood and we definitely don't have enough do we looks like we're going to the nether and this gives me a good chance to show you this mountain is what's going to hold our giant nether portal because right now it's not looking too impressive but i put it here knowing this is where we're gonna build it it feels bad to be back but hopefully we can just grab the wood and get right out of here. Because if we're going to die someplace, it's going to be here. Hold on, watch this. Oh, hold on, watch this. Oh my. First try. 
course. Okay, this is a little sketchy here. No big deal, no big deal. I don't like this very much, but I think we're almost there. I remember this is the path I took last time anyways. Why are there so many mobs? What the heck? Oh, no. Not good, not good, not good, not good, not good, not good. Oh, uh, this is a really bad idea. No, 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 no. Just getting this warp biome, and we should be pretty safe. Not too many mobs can spawn there. Except for these 10,000 piglins, I guess. And I'm definitely gonna grab some of the mushrooms so we never, ever, ever have to come back into this horrible place again. Saying that I'm never coming back here in the same episode I'm building a giant nether portal is kind of weird, I'm realizing, but uh, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll be back. I kind of have to be back, unfortunately. Alrighty, we got all of our warped wood, which is great and all, but that's only a little bit of what we actually need to build this house for our villager. We also need a whole lot of bamboo, which I'm hoping we have. Oh, that might actually be enough. We actually need the strip bamboo, so I think what we'll do is just... There we go, and I really like this texture. I can't wait to build with it for the first time. I need a bunch of deep slate. Luckily, we have that. We also need to grab some bricks from down here. Just grab a little bit of clay. Let's go ahead and journey this way, because I think this is where we're going to find our dark oak. And wow, this world never stops with a super cool terrain. I mean, I want to build here now, too, but I think we'll come back to this in the future. There it is. The dark oak forest. Even more, oh no, even more crazy mountains over here. Here we go. We can add these to all the blocks we need. Two more blocks I definitely didn't have were azalea leaves and acacia leaves, but luckily they're not too hard to get. And I think this here should be just about everything, which is great because now we can build this amazing house for our villager. I think this house fits in great with this area. And of course, the inside has got so much room to put our villager. Oh, and I almost forgot I'm supposed to do one of these call to action things. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. I've already put so much work into this episode and I end up putting like 100 days into it. So please subscribe. So let's grab him out. What the heck? How did this even happen? How is this even possible? Does that mean we're gonna have to go to the nether to cure you? Oh no. Hold on, wait. I actually have an idea. If we head over here, and I think in this house, did I already steal it? Uh, there it is. Why the heck did I move it? We can actually use this to craft our potions, because I believe weakness potion is the only potion you don't actually need the, um, the nether wart for. We need sugar, a spider eye, and brown mushroom. Oh, wait. We still totally need blaze powder, don't we? I guess we're gonna have to go to the nether. And I feel like it's gonna take so long to find this. Okay, I've already got eight blaze rods. This should be plenty, but I just want to grab a few more. Alrighty, that should be enough. And now I think we can finally brew these potions. And we'll make these splash potions. There we go. Let's go cure that villager. Alrighty, let's grab this. And you should be ready in a few minutes. Here we go. Now let's get this guy out of here and he's already sleeping perfect let's fill this in and there we go we got mending for one emerald which isn't bad at all and we can also buy books which is really nice let's buy him out of these this is great and all but uh how the heck am i gonna get more emeralds i didn't even think about that hold on i do actually have one idea so we can go ahead and grab some pumpkins from up here and then just hope there's a villager still left in this village i see one he won't be in here for long. We're taking him to that house. Oh, wait, there's actually two of them. I'll grab this guy. And perfect. This guy is a pumpkin trader. We have him locked in in here now. So in order to make sure we have an unlimited supply of pumpkins, I decided to build a little pumpkin field just outside the house.
This build is looking great, but there's still one more little thing I kind of want to do. I want to build a tree, and this tree is going to be a little different than what you're probably used to seeing. So it's actually going to take a lot of wool, specifically yellow wool, which I'm breeding up right now. And here it is. I'll turn on the shader right now so you can see it. I like how this tree turned out quite a bit. It looks pretty good next to our house and next to the pumpkin patch. In my opinion, this whole area just looks great now. And I forgot to mention, I also built a river to go alongside the house. It's not finished yet, but I think it looks sick. And it also gives some ex explanation to why there was a water wheel here. Let's take a good look at where we're building. Up here on this side of this mountain here, I specifically placed my portal because I knew this is where we I wanted to make the giant portal. First, we've got to flatten this whole area and hide this cave. And then I think we can build the platform for the portal here. And the giant portal frame should go up to about that. This is going to be a lot of work. So I think we should go ahead and get started with some blackstone collection. Get that over with. That's going to suck. I actually do have a lot of the deep slate and stuff we need. However, there are about five blocks I counted that we really just don't have. And I'm going to need to gather a lot of. Next up for our purple wool, it was honestly pretty easy because we already have all these sheep. You'll see why we need so much purple wool in a second. What I hadn't realized is we actually did have a chest full of stone, which was nice, but we definitely didn't have a chest full of obsidian. So next up, I had to head down into a cave and mine for a very long time. I'm not sure if you've ever tried to gather crying obsidian, but it's, it's horrible. The only ways to get it is trading with piglins, which is almost impossible, or we could just go through ruined portals and just pillage them all for their obsidian, which is what I had to do. I think that's all the resources gathered. So let's go ahead and make this area here a whole lot better by removing this cave and filling it in with grass. We've got this nice big area planned out here. So let's go ahead and maybe start and maybe make some progress on this portal. I'm going to start, I think, by making a staircase up there. This looks high enough for me. So let's go ahead and make a little platform up here. Oh yeah, this platform is going to be pretty nice. But I also don't really want it to be floating for too long. So I think we should add some sort of walls here. I actually have a pretty good idea for this. So what I think we should try to do here is actually make a little bit of some giant torches some giant like firelight thingies that turned out pretty good so i'm thinking let's put one two three about three of those on either side okay i feel like we're getting somewhere but we need to do quite a bit of terraforming so it doesn't have such an abrupt ending over here yeah check this out this is looking a whole lot better it feels like it's actually meant to fit within the surrounding it's pretty nicely tucked within these two mountains now this keeps getting better and better we now have a little area in here where we're actually going to construct this portal so let's go ahead and place down our obsidian and there we go but this looks pretty stupid we'll light it in a minute but for now i think we need to build a big frame around this There we go. We can now light this incredible portal. Oh, of course. I forgot. I didn't actually forget. I knew this was going to happen. We can just go ahead and drop this data pack right in there. Relog in our world and go ahead and light this portal. Look at that. I think this turned out so good, but there is one thing that makes this just a little bit better, but it's going to take a little bit of a journey to the taiga where we need to collect a bunch of leaves and wood because you guessed it, we're going to build a bunch of trees. I'm thinking we'll build three pine trees, one there, there, and up there. Let's hop into a time lapse. And I am very proud of everything we've managed to build in this episode. Not only did we build this amazing portal, 
with so much detail, a really unique style, and these trees all around it. But we also built our villager house, which also turned out great. And these is really cool block set. With this first house complete here, really inspired me to want to put an entire city there. So that's exactly what I was going to do. And I was going to do it all in one kind of month. What I want to do today is tackle one of our first buildings and really get down the style and scale we want this village to be. I mean, this house kind of helps, but I think we can do a lot more. In between episodes, I laid out a ton of different layouts here, which we can pick from to kind of start our base. And I think I want to tackle this one here today on the outskirts of the city. This is going to be kind of like a guard building. Whoever lives here is sort of guarding the village. I've really been wanting to build with blackstone, which you have quite a bit of from last episode, and also some white blocks. So we have a white black contrast for our build. I think we'll also use quite a bit of dark oak wood. We don't really have a whole lot right now so a good first project could be heading up here to my new logging area and working on chopping down some trees except we only have two dark oak saplings are you kidding me looks like we've got a bit of a walk on our hands here actually i had do got this horse though so we can use this this horse is so slow this is kind of annoying me this isn't even really worth it but oh well uh, i was pretty sure there was dark oh there it is right over there and there's a whole lot i want to say about the series we're doing i'll leave that for a little later on right now let's just collect some dark oak wood All right, I've got four stacks and a bunch of saplings in case we run out, so I think we should be good. Unfortunately, it looks like my I lost my horse. That's too bad. I think he's gone forever. I think we should not even look for him. Such a shame. I really, really like that horse a lot. Dark Oak checked off the list. I think we should move on to some white color blocks like calcite and diorite. And the only place we're going to find that is underground. I actually remember somewhere down one of these tunnels, I actually found an amethyst geode. Uh, yep, right here, right here. But up next, we need to find some diorite. There's some right over here in this cave. Let's grab this real quick. Diorite and calcite all checked off the list. I do want to try to make some concrete though. Oh, I actually have a bit of sand and gravel. Okay, we might actually have enough here. Let's see. Oh wait, we already have some in there. And then if we just grab some white dye, how much can we make? Quite a bit. This should be maybe enough. And this light gray concrete powder will take some of that too. So what we got to do now is do a little bit of pillaring. Let some water flow down and we can mine it all right back up. And then one final thing I need, I should have gotten it back when we were down there. I need to grab some deep slate. I'll be right back. Alrighty, we got our deep slate. But did I mention I I hate this layout we have? Or I don't hate it. It's just not big enough. Um, How about we just add a little bit to it, actually? Maybe for this little area here, which is going to be a tower, we can make it a little bit more of a uh, decorated base like this. I'll keep messing with it, but I feel like we're on the right track here. There are just so many like dark gray blocks in the game that I feel like I have to mess around with them to see if I can find something that looks kind of unique. I think we're kind of getting there. I also, I think this is looking good. I also want to add some different blocks for more shading here. More just darker blocks, but I think these look good. Here we go. I like this a lot. Let's put all our deep slate blocks away and grab some dark oak and our lighter blocks. I'm going to go ahead and lay out some pillars here. But I think we should start by just finding the height of this tower. So let's start building up. Minecraft builds always have that phase where they just look horrible and you have no clue what you're doing. But it usually works out in the end and I'm hoping it works out in the end like this time. I'm pretty confident with this little section here. So let's fill in the walls. And I made this four blocks. Oh no, this is going to be really difficult to build right. We'll see. I think I can pull it off. I'm looking at this build and I'm actually seeing seeing like a gatehouse here of having a gate here which will work perfectly with what we were trying to do so maybe we'll transition over to sort of more of an idea like that okay i'm starting to like this a lot more it's really coming together now i think so let's just put up the rest of these walls all right all right this is not looking too bad at all let's go ahead and add in some base shapes to the roof completely undetailed just to figure out how it should look i actually want to put a watchtower at the top of this tower here so we're gonna have to grab a few new blocks here i have an idea for something i've done something similar before i'll show you here in a second i'm copying down a design here for something that i built at the end of my last hardcore season kind of forgot we're probably gonna use quite a bit of spruce wood in the detailing of this so we should
actually go ahead and grow one of those big trees because we have no spruce wood. Now we have a lot of spruce wood, or at least we're about to. Let's build up some pillars here. Okay, hop in free cam to take a look at this. I like that a lot. So let's go ahead and put a little spiked roof on this if we can. And then I'm feeling like we can even add some sort of pattern up here. We'll see how it turns out. There's still a few different rough edges I can see here that we kind of need to work out. So if we just... Here we go. A lot of the fine tuning is done and it's pretty much a blank canvas now to begin detailing. And I think the most obvious first edition would be some windows, you know? So let's punch some holes in our build. With this even section, we'll do a two by two window here in the middle. Let's go ahead and make this gatehouse an actual gate real quick just with some spruce fences i think these look the best this should pretty much keep mobs out other than maybe we can just put some carpet down there at the bottom i think we should go ahead and right away pave our pathway through here i think we'll make it out of coarse dirt i think that's what the paths inside the city will be our next step here is to figure out how to add some color to this thing because to be honest it's all just really dark bland colors so little pops of color maybe from flower bushes or leaves or maybe even a like a brick chimney could look really cool let's start with some of these azaleas there we go there's kind of this awkward spot here in the roof and i think putting a chimney there would really help break it up and kind of smooth out that rough edge there we go we need to head up here to the top of the tower and then place our bell right there that way we can warn the village of any attacks from whatever's over there i guess gonna place these iron bars along here just like this the next thing we definitely have to do is this interior here although it's pretty small building interiors for a lot of these houses is really gonna add so much life to the village and my idea for the floor is actually gonna be bamboo blocks let's see how these look yeah this is the perfect color for this area however there's a window like way up here so i think it only makes sense if there's a little area up stairs too. staircase up and then what i think we'll do is we'll use dark oak as our walls not quite sure what to do for the roof so i think i might just put some beams across like this there 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 come on Ugh. i think for more contrast we'll add a mangrove wall right here and maybe actually some more mangrove just in this in general down here or i just really like this texture in general to be honest so let's just rip out this whole wall and place mangrove for it all but i still want that mangrove in here somewhere so i'm gonna put it right here and maybe up here too because this is like a guard building there's a few details i want to add i'm gonna add a anvil up here for our, our little pot and then down here we're gonna have two armor stands both of which are gonna have full iron armor if there's one thing we have a lot of it's iron thanks to our farm so i'm not afraid to use a bunch of it in this build today's episode is gonna involve digging down and building a cactus farm in this outline here and then building up a really cool design that i'm yet to come up with but we'll work on it together after building this entryway in the last episode i'm really excited to keep working on this village so let's figure out exactly what we need and we're actually gonna need green dye for this house a little bit so i think we should build our cactus farm right away pretty sure i had cactus yep there's some let's dig down and build a room a little bit into the ground here place sand every few blocks like this in a grid pattern i think we'll do four by four Now we gotta place down fences every couple blocks to break all of the cactus. And then we need a ton of different water sources flowing down into the middle. And then to get the cactus out of here, I think we should pipe it down here somewhere. All right, so I've got this water column here, which drops down here, which goes all the way across here. And if we throw 57 torches in here, let's see how many of them we get. Here they come, 57, perfect. All right, this farm works flawlessly. All right, there's a few blocks here we'll have to hide with like decorations or something, but overall, this cactus farm works perfect. So if we put what cactus we have in here right now, oh wait, these totally aren't gonna grow, are they? Hold on, we need to clear this out okay so what we'll do for these ones over here because they need covered up we'll just raise up the ground a little bit actually while we're waiting for this to start working i think we should head over and start figuring out what materials we're going to be using the reason we even built that cactus farm is because i want to use a green roof with a combination of moss blocks which we're gonna have to gather and green wool which we need to die for we're also going to use cobblestone which i have plenty of and we're gonna have to gather some tough and oak wood as well as some spruce wood too let's get our resource gathering kicked off with a whole bunch of of tough i use tough quite a bit and i really like the texture and i can't wait for them to add all the new variants but for now we can just stick to the regular tough it's still cool too let's drop back into our mine i feel like this thing's gonna be fully mined oh 
I feel like this thing's gonna be fully mined out by the time we finish this series. We're gonna need a lot of different stones to build all this up. Is that it? Two diamonds? I'll take it, I guess. Ooh, there's more. There's more. More diamonds. All right. More diamonds. More diamonds. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 28 diamonds just from this 30 seconds of mining. Not bad. That should be more than enough tough right there. Let's head back over to our village. I always forget I have this like detached camera thing. It's kind of cool. We should be using it more often, to be honest. Just imagine when this village is done someday. Like with the sunset right here, this looks so cool already. Just imagine houses all around here. But let's stash away our diamonds and of course our tough. Sleep real quick so we don't get destroyed immediately by mobs. And see if our cactus farm produced any cactus. I must have been out of range. Or it's not working. There's always that option too. No, this is definitely how you build it. I was just probably way out of range. That's all right. We'll check back here in a second. And in the meantime, let's go ahead and mine up some oak wood. I think we'll do a little bit of a time lapse for this one. Oak wood checked off the list. That should be enough. I hope four stacks is probably enough. And our farm finally produced some cactus. That's a good sign. It's going to take a little while to get all that we need, but that's all right. Now it's time to just start grinding spruce wood, my favorite. Hopefully, we don't even have enough saplings to grow a big tree yet, so I'm going to have to just mine these for now. Here we go. Let's tear down a couple of these big trees. All right, let's chop down these two trees. There we go. That's probably enough, but we can do one more. More than enough spruce wood all gathered up. It's actually relatively easy to gather moss. We just got to find somewhere that's going to be covered up. How about in this building? Actually, we probably shouldn't destroy our building like this. Let's go over to a cave or something. We have this annoying canyon here that we can make deeper if we want to. Yeah, let's do that. All we have to do is place a piece of bone meal down, a moss down, and then bone meal it, and we can just start digging down with this. And just like that, we've got plenty of moss. Now we just need this cactus farm to work, or maybe we're gonna have to go to a desert or something. And let's hold on. Can you combine blue and yellow dye? Oh, you can't. That's stupid. All right, let's go to a desert. If only I had a horse. It's not like I left him behind last episode or anything. Wait, let me just be smart and just make a portal to it in the nether. I calculated, I think it's 155.6 are the coordinates we need to put the new nether portal. And we can finally get to use for this portal. Finally use this one from our last real episode. It's going to be over lava, isn't it? I just know it. This is not risky, I promise you. This is completely safe. I'm not about to lose my hardcore world here. Okay, we got to put the portal right here. And come on, give me a desert. This is the desert, I think. Just way underground. Alrighty, in the desert, let's go ahead and grab some cactus. 49 should be plenty. I'm just gonna head on back. Alright, let me smelt this up real quick. Let's dye up all of these sheep so we can get a ton of green wool. Hopefully that's enough wool. We can always come back for more. Let's go ahead and get started with building this up. I think, I think we will start with a cobblestone and tough base here. And it'll go pretty tall. However, I think this wing over here will be pretty short. And then we'll do sort of a gradient here adding some shading and I'm gonna experiment with some andesite along the sides like that I think that'll turn out good all right here's our foundation built up let's get some pillars similar to what we did over here but this time out of strip spruce all right here's the spruce frame let's go ahead and add in our oak wood and see how it looks All right, this is looking great, and it's fitting in pretty good to the city. So let's go ahead and add a green roof to this thing. We'll start with our moss and then add some detail later on. Here's all the roof frames built up. They look good, but like this is going to be kind of hard to figure out. Let's go ahead and add some shading to this roof, just pretty subtly with some green concrete and green wool. We'll see how it turns out. The roof on this is looking great. I really like all this shading. If we want to bring this house to the next level though, we're going to have to add some doors and windows into this so we don't just have a bunch of holes in the house. Let's put in these windows. Here's one, three and four, five and six, seven, number eight, and window nine. Really difficult to build like this. All right, that works. 
I want to add plants to all these windows, so let's actually try something new. Let's try a block I have never really used before, these cherry leaves. I think these will look pretty good. However, the color on them is kind of bright, so let's use signs to kind of hide a little bit of it to make it look like it's in a pot. Yeah, I think that's going to work. Those leaves are such a bright color, but I think they kind of work. I might end up changing them out, but... I think they kind of work. One thing I do want to do is add a deep slate chimney right there. Yep, this works right here. That looks pretty good, actually. I think I'm going to use warped wood for these doors. I think it'll look cool. At this point, I'm just going to go around and add a few more little details like this. I'm really happy with how this area is looking. However, can you see a problem with our gatehouse? If you look over here, it's pretty obvious to tell that this city is not at all defended. This, you can just walk right in. So we need to build some sort of small wall design that'll keep people out, but it's also pretty subtle. So hopefully it doesn't block the view of any of the other houses. I'd love to make it out of granite. So let's find some. There's got to be something in this cave, surely, right? Yep, right over here. Let's make a small little wall across here. Oh yeah, that's so much better. You can still technically get in, but just don't worry about that. We also have this area here, which we're going to go ahead and add some coarse dirt to. I think it'd be cool to make this sort of a marketplace area of our city at some point. And we'll have to come back and do a lot more later, but for now, I think all the detail we'll do in this area is just building a little well. I don't know how to build this. How do I? There we go. And here we go. We just got done building up this gatehouse and this cactus factory right here. And today there's another very important build we need to add to this world. And that is going to be right up here. I want to build a library right here in order to store our enchantment table, which is currently down here in this ugly mob grinder. So we can just pick this up right now, I think, and move it over in that area. And they also want to make use of these new chisel bookshelves in order to store all of our enchanted books we have. But this build's going to be a little bit tricky because we're trying out a new block combination today. I want to try to combine the packed mud colors and textures like that with the red mangrove wood as a roof. I think this is going to look really cool, but it's going to be tricky to gather all these resources and completely pull it off. Because in this series, I don't plan anything beforehand. I have no clue what this build is going to look like at the end, but we'll certainly find out. Let's go check our storage room, which really needs an upgrade here. We need to build something around this maybe even today but let's see we do got we got quite a bit of mangrove here actually that's gonna be enough mangrove but in terms of mud which is over here uh that's i'm not sure that's gonna be enough we're probably gonna have to we're probably gonna have to head over to a mangrove swamp and see if we can't get some more so let me empty my inventory real quick and see if we can't head to the mangrove swamp Here's the swamp. Wait, where's the mangrove again? Am I in the wrong place? I better not be in the wrong place. Let me grab some cow's lime over here so I can make some more books. But I think the mangrove swamp should hopefully be like around here. There we go. There's the mangrove swamp. And it's been a while since I've really been to one of these. I kind of grabbed some mangrove popagules like at the start of the series. But the last time I really been to the one of these is like last hardcore season, which feels so long ago now but let's mine up some mud real quick this is a nice area right here this is perfect and as we head back i want to take a few seconds to say thank you to you guys because when i'm recording this is exactly one year ago today when my first video blew up in a while my hardcore full movie thing that has only over 2 million views now which is just crazy and that really kickstarted this entire last year and crazy amount of growth from the channel but i'm so happy that people genuinely care about the videos i'm making and yeah that, that's all i wanted to say i'll talk more about some of the history of this channel throughout later on in the series as we get to the end of the series but let's head back and get this house fully built up there we are almost back home so in order to turn all this mud into packed mud we're gonna need to collect a lot of wheat so real quick let me drop this off in our storage because we need to head over and collect some wheat from our conveniently placed wheat field that's gonna be easy and i have to be posting a video every three days so we don't got a whole lot of time to waste on editing but i think we could probably spare just enough time for a little bit of a wheat mining montage here let's see how it goes
We now need to combine our wheat and our mud, just like this. There's still a few more blocks I want to collect though, because two blocks that'll look really good in a gradient with this is the jungle wood and granite. So let's see if we can't find both of those. So let's do our daily tradition of gathering a random stone type. Today it's going to be granite. Granite checked off the list as well. Now all we need to do is we need to chop down some jungle trees. Let's do that right now. I want this build to be a really central, important building in the city, and that's going to start off with a really with a very noticeable foundation. So I'm going to create some packed mud here and go around placing a lot of this down. And there's a somewhat decent chance we're going to end up running out of mud, but let's just hope that doesn't happen. Having such a large foundation like this is really going to make this build stand out, hopefully in a good way. All right, this is looking great so far. So let's go ahead and get some more blocks placed down here. Yeah, this height is looking good for this middle section, but the gradient's horrible. So I need to change that real quick. All right, there's definitely something here. I don't know what it is, but we're going to have to gather a lot more wheat because I'm already out of the packed mud. You see, mud's not the problem, but actually this might be enough. Let's start making some more walls and see how we do. Here are the three front walls in, and I'm not sure we're really going to get a good idea of how this will look until we build some roofs on this thing, so let's do that right now. Good news, I like this color combination a lot, but it's going to be kind of tricky here to figure out how all these shapes are going to work. Let's see if we can figure it out. And I may use slabs for this roof just because of how big it is. That'd be the first time using slabs in this. Actually, actually no, I've used them over there, but... One of the first times I've used slabs in a roof, I've just been using full blocks a lot lately for all these builds. So I'm not sure if it'll look out of place or not. We're going to see here in a second. That roof isn't too bad. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I might actually be fine with this full block roof here. We'll see how this turns out. Yeah, I think I like that. I think we're going to stick with this. We got most of that built up and now I'm just sitting here repairing our shovel for a second. Give me one minute here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, check this out. This is looking pretty good. It's still pretty messy. We're gonna have to do a lot of detail work. I've also started popping out the uh, foundation a little more to see if we can add a little bit more depth to this build. And I really think this is gonna help a lot. All right, this is looking good. I think this helps a lot. Let's go ahead and figure out how our windows are gonna go. I think I wanna do some pretty long, tall windows like this, symmetrical on either side. I think these windows are gonna work out well. I think this is a pretty good template for how we want our windows to be. We're just going to copy it on the other side. And to make it easier to detail this thing, let's put on a floor right away. I'm thinking maybe some dark oak. Well, first of all, we're just going to do regular dark oak for a little pathway through here. And then some dark oak in this pattern. And then we can strip it all, which is pretty satisfying. Let's go through here and grab all this. Oh yeah, this floor looks great. So let's build a bit of a staircase up here. Let's see if we can't use like slabs or something. And same thing on this side. Let's get a door on this thing. I'm trying to think what would work well. Maybe just more mangrove or let's try bamboo actually. I've never used bamboo doors. Let's see how those look. Lock there, there, there. Let's get a little spruce frame around here and then a whole bunch of bamboo. And you know that's not actually too bad. I'm gonna stick with this for now. Before we build the windows or something unfinished I want to do real quick, I want to add a quick gradient or a little bit of detailing, some shading to the roof. And what we're gonna do let me find some blocks real quick, is use a palette like this. Mangrove wood, which we already have, the strip mangrove wood, and netherrack, which looks pretty cool as a darker tone. But we're gonna need to chop down a few more mangrove trees to get all the supplies we need. There we go, just a little bit of the shading in the roof really helps, but now we need to start adding a lot more detail to the front of the house. And there's a problem I kinda need to solve with this. You see, this build is really unique from the rest of the village so far and that's a good thing to a certain degree but i think it's too unique to the point where it kind of doesn't fit in so we need to start adding features to it that really ties it into the rest of the village we'll see how that goes the first way we can do this is by using the same window shutter design we use there and also on pretty much all of our houses in this area to be honest i always use this design i was talking about in the last video i think and i'll continue talking about it because it's the one I use. That's the one I think looks best. Let's just go around and see what kind of other small details we can add. Okay, this thing is looking so cool, but let's focus on the inside for a minute here. So let's start 
with this half here. Let's start by placing down our enchantment setup. Okay, let's go ahead and build some bookshelves like these. Here's what I have for the interior right now. I'm not like completely done with it. There's still definitely a lot of stuff, a lot of empty areas we need to add to. But for now, this is a pretty good skeleton for how it's going to look. And then one final detail I want to add to the house itself, if we head up here, is some of these iron bars. Let's go ahead and add some coarse dirt up here as well and connect these two areas together. We need to upgrade our storage room. In our last few episodes, we built this gatehouse, this cactus farm, and even this library over here. And I'm really happy with all of it, except for this over here, our storage room. And this is probably going to be a little bit different than what you've seen before ever in Minecraft. But I want to actually keep this outside. I want to make an outdoor courtyard area here that's going to have our storage room. Because I really don't like the inconvenience of having to go inside a building to get storage. I want it to be as easy as possible to grab. So we're going to be transforming this area today as well as working on one of the houses in the village. I'm thinking maybe this one. I'm not positive yet. But I'm, th I'm liking the idea of transforming this one to something with maybe some crimson wood. Which I'm yet to use in this city. Crimson is this one, I think. Yeah, that color right there could look so cool. First thing I want to do is I want to add one more building back here because I feel like this is a too open area. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Yeah, let's go ahead and add one more building. Or you know what? For now, let's just destroy this. I don't feel like doing this. Let's go ahead and get this whole floor replaced with coarse dirt. Here's what I ended up with and I like this a lot. We'll probably end up doing this for the rest of the village to be honest. But for now, let's keep adding some more structure to this. I want to put some roofs over these chests and some fencing so no mobs can get in. For that, we're going to grab a little bit of spruce wood. All right, let's grow one or two of these. We'll grab two and chop these down. I'm going to put up a little bit of something right here. I'm not quite sure what this is, to be honest. That actually looks really cool, but let's go ahead and build some sort of overhang over top of all these materials just to make it seem like they're actually meant to be here and not just a bunch of chest spam, you know? Yeah, this is simple, but I like it a lot. And in order to make this not so weird, let's go ahead and use the land to add a back to this instead of like a building or something. This is looking pretty good, but I think we need to like balance it a little bit more. I'm going to build a little birch tower right here and see how that looks. Here's how we're looking, and I think this is a nice little upgrade to the area. One thing I'm noticing is, I think I want to put, like, a well here in the middle. I think that'll look cool, plus it'll give us a place to get unlimited water from just near our storage. Because right now, I always find myself running all the way over to that river just to get water. So let's build something here. <clears throat> well looks great. Let's also build a little pine tree right here. Let's see how we can make this look. Hey, that's not bad at all. Yeah, this is perfect. I'm not sure if I'm going to put any more over here or not yet, but I think one is good just for now. And we'll be able to work on this area more later once it's backed up to these houses when we build them later on. I'm really happy with this area, which means I'm safely able to move on to this over here, which is going to be our next build. I'm not quite sure what we're going to end up putting in here yet. Maybe even some furnaces. That could be useful. We don't really have any smelters yet we'll see i really want to use the color of sandstone for these walls so i think we need to head to our portal and over to the desert okay let's grab some sandstone right down here This should be more than enough sandstone, but I totally forgot. We had we gotta head right back to the nether for some crimson wood. Yeah, we got none. The real question is, is there one even nearby? I have no clue. I haven't really been paying too much attention, but we're like 430 days into this world, and I haven't used the totem yet. I'm thinking maybe we should try to go to day 1000 without using totems or even elytra. That might be a horrible idea. That might result in a very early death. But I think it'd be a cool challenge and a pretty good achievement if we made it to a thousand days all without using a totem. But I think by day a thousand, I definitely put too much work into this world to take it that risky to say the least. Oh my gosh, why did I almost just do that? I am an idiot for trying to do this. This is so scary. Just completely disregarding like the four months I have put work into this world for this risky, stupid bridge. And thinking about it now, I wasn't really planning on ever building a tree farm, but now I'm thinking I might eventually want to build another tree farm because nether trees suck. I really don't like being here at all. Ah, uh, yes, cool. Okay, 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 okay. I just want to grab like a little bit of the fungi stuff, the grass. Why there's 
so many. I'm recording this in the middle of the night. I do not have enough energy to fight off like 3,000 piglins. How about we just drop down? Oh, there's still so many. Genuine like 10,000 mobs on this one little island. Okay, I think we're safe. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I've evaded death. I mean, in my opinion, every time I nearly die, this makes this world just a little bit, a little bit cooler. That's not cool at all. Why are there so many? Um, let's see. Yeah, how do I deal? Oh my goodness. Leave me alone, please. That worked out. All of that for a stack of this Nylium. But what that means is that we'll never really have to go back there again, because now that I have it, we can just bone meal the saplings right off of it. Small chance this could be enough wood. Definitely not. Hold on, something I definitely need to do real quick, because I need to smelt all that sandstone down to smooth sandstone. I need to build a furnace thing. We can just build it right here. We're gonna go chest, chest, some hoppers into the furnace, and then put a spot to fuel with the coal and a spot to fuel with the material. And that should work slowly while we start building this thing up. I want to start by making a pretty dark foundation, but not as dark as deep slate. I want to do tough and cobblestone, I think. All right, here's what I'm thinking. Maybe for this one here. Well, for this one here, we're just going to have sandstone and no supporting pillars like that. But maybe for this one here, we'll add some birch pillars. I don't have enough birch to actually lay them out yet, but let me place these down. Yeah, I mean, why not? I think this will look cool. So let's chop down a bunch of birch trees. There we go. This will be a good size. Let's fill this in with sandstone if we have enough. And the birch is actually darker than I thought, but I think that's a good thing. I think it's good contrast. And for our roof, I'm going to use the crimson, but I'm also going to try something that I saw a while ago on a Jermsy Boy live stream or video or something. I forget. It was a while ago. I want to try to make a one and a half block slope on this roof. If you want, if you're confused by that, let me show you real quick. If we bring a hold on, if we bring a layer of full blocks like this, and then we put slabs on top. Now we bring it up a layer like this with full blocks. And this one and a half block incline is something you almost never see in Minecraft builds, so it's pretty unique. Yeah, and it's looking a little messy right now, but of course, this how the, that's how these things go. We're just gonna have to start adding some detail to it till it looks good. And we also want to go ahead and start working on this over here, which will be probably a little bit taller than this. Don't have nearly enough smooth sandstone yet. It's still smelting. It's taking its time. However, I am starting to work on the roof here, and I think we're gonna get something pretty good here. And this almost looks like it could be a pretty cool, like, clock tower for the village. I'm not sure if I'll be able to work that or not but that's definitely a, an idea we'll see let's see if we can't figure out how to turn this into a clock we'll make it round like that and then place some bone blocks behind i think those will work good and then like this or something yeah i think that works i mean i think you can tell what it is at least it's not perfect too bad either yeah I like that we'll keep that we just need to add a whole lot more detail to this because man does that look boring and oh man i have to do the back don't i, I don't want to do the back come on well i'm deciding what kind of detail needs to go on this let me quickly put up a wall here to kind of hide the outside from this village so i'm trying to figure out how to make this look a little better and i'm kind of liking replacing the cobblestone with the mud bricks i think it's a better color combination Let's try it. Yeah, this is a whole lot better. I really like this color compared to the ugly cobblestone before. And I think it helps blend it into the rest of the city a lot better. There's just something about this. There's just something about this tower here that doesn't sit right with me. I think, hmm, I think what I need to do is maybe add some strip birch pillars on the sides. Because I just can't figure out why this looks so plain and ugly, even though there's a lot of block variation. I think the problem is there's not enough blocks that aren't like per similar enough to a uh, sandstone. So let's see how this looks okay i think this might be able to fix our problem let's see how it turns out that's such an improvement for sure let's go ahead and add a door and a little porch up here in the front i think okay i almost just got blown up a creeper just blew me off of this thing down on the ground and i landed with three hearts that could have been really bad let's sleep real quick and then get this porch repaired Oh my gosh, oh, I need to heal. That's scary. All right, please just let me sleep through the night. Oh, this is so annoying. It just destroyed everything. All the blocks are gone too. That's more like it. And this is turning out so great. I'm feeling like I need to figure out a way to detail the roof though. For one more quick detail on the roof, I want to head back to the Mesa real quick because I want to grab a little bit of terracotta. I think we can make magenta terracotta and that'll look pretty good. And what I want to try is using this purple terracotta in our roof. But as this sort of frame thing, I'm not sure what you'd call this exactly. 
but it's gonna go up on the side one block in like this and we'll see how it looks yeah i mean that's not bad that's definitely an improvement just adds a little bit of detail that the build was missing and i think that's perfect we've spent the last couple weeks building a whole bunch of these houses in the city and we're making pretty good progress but i want to speed it up even more by taking out a big portion of the marked area i want to work on this little city street here with these three different buildings we'll have a tower a middle building here probably with an acacia roof and then this one right here i'm thinking of adding some sort of brown terracotta brown concrete roof in terms of what the rest of the build is gonna look like uh, we're gonna find out because i don't plan any of these builds if you didn't know i want to test the combination real quick if we make some white terracotta i want to figure out what blocks look good with that maybe diorite works not really or birch that's still not really it either that's actually not too bad that might work not perfect the reason is i'm th the reason is i'm thinking the white terracotta will look pretty good with acacia yeah that looks not too bad so we got to figure out what's gonna look good with the white terracotta but we can worry about that a little later before we do any building today i think what we need right here is a nice big tree actually if we head over to my creative world real quick and fly over here to where i'm building these trees you can see i already have a bunch of tree designs planned out here and i think i want to build this one inside of our world or maybe this one we'll see which one size fits better i can't really picture it right now and the best way for us to copy this over is to use lightmatica let me show you here it is this is a small one let's see how this looks in the world this just gives us a blueprint and we actually have to build it ourselves um i like that i don't know if this is too big it kind of blocks the view there's also a part of me that likes having it block house like that you know what i like it right there way better let's build it right there i can't imagine we have that many azalea no not really and then in terms of granite that'll be enough because if you didn't notice we're using granite for the trunk which is a little weird but it also looks cool it looks like a skinnier trunk and if we look at our materials list we need exactly 59 azalea leaves and 17 acacia leaves for this tree so we should be able to get that with just a couple trees chopped down. All right, let's hop into a time lapse and get this tree built up. Yeah, I think that was the perfect spot to put this tree. It doesn't block too many of our line of sight, and, and I think it helps. And I think before there was this kind of awkward spot here, but now it's filled up. And over time, once we start adding more trees, it's gonna add so much life to this city. Cause right now it feels pretty lifeless with these empty, undetailed areas we gotta get back to. But let's get right back to our city street. I think for the tower, I wanna go for a cobblestone, mossy cobblestone style. Let's see if we have everything we need. We got plenty of moss. Okay. Okay, so we can actually combine one of these stacks of moss with cobblestone. And this is actually the easiest way to get mossy cobblestone. I'm wrong. Oh, wait, no, never mind. It's, it's similar, just like that. Then I'll take some regular cobblestone, then we'll move up into stone, I suppose. I think that'll be good. That's very tall, but I think it'll work. Let's actually put andesite up here at the very top of the tower. I can't tell if this is too tall or not, but I think think it'll be okay once we have the rest of these built up i think the gradient on this tower turned out great and for the roof i think i want to use deep slate like the really dark deep slate and then the lighter deep slate so let's put a ring of deep slate ring of deep slate tiles that is and then we'll put the lighter deep slate along the sides then at the very top we'll do wall fence and lightning rod and water bucket clutch hold on something's something's off about it in my opinion let's go back up like this maybe yeah that's way better it looks way more smooth and of course we'll put windows and details on this at the end but right now we need to build two more houses build number two here is going to start with a deep slate base and to make it a little easier to place the deep slate like on its side like that we're going to put a wall of dirt back here temporarily deep slate bricks and then a gradient of these like that we can make sure of course we do that on all sides just repeating with the dirt now we gotta frame out the second floor with spruce, which I'm really hoping I have. Ooh, okay, that be enough? Probably not. It's worth a try. And I'm seeing these barrels. I wanna try to use barrels too. Okay, I'm liking this, I'm liking this. If we put some fence posts too here, I think that adds quite a bit as well. We'll do the same thing at the back. Now let's fill in between these walls with some sandstone. I know we just used some sandstone on the last build, but that's all right. I think it's pretty normal to have some consistency with the block type in villages like this, because realistically, there's not that many plain colors like this 
we have to work with, so this will be fine. And then thankfully we have plenty of acacia wood, so we can go ahead and build a really plain roof for now, because I'm going to detail it later. Don't worry. All right, yeah, that's not bad. It's kind of a weird shape, but overall I think it works. And we'll come back and detail it pretty much the exact same way we detailed that roof over there for our starter base. Now let's tackle this third house here. The actual one uses deep slate for the base, but I think instead we're going to go with tough maybe. It's still pretty dark, but it's not exactly the same as this one, which is nice. All right, we'll go for some stone bricks here for the foundation like this. And I wish we had tough, I wish we had the tough bricks in the game right now, but we'll see. I'm not sure if that's too much of a contrast, to be honest. We'll stay with it for now, but we we're probably going to need to change it. We'll see how I end up liking it at the end. Okay, I think I figured out what I want to do for this. We're actually going to make it three stories tall. So let's get this dark oak frame out. There we go. I think this is going to work out. Let's finish this frame. This is what we've got. And I think it's a lot different from a lot of the other builds, but I think it fits in really well into the city. For the roof, I think a color that contrasts with the orange well, but also goes with the jungle is... Let's grab some terracotta and blue dye and we can look at this blue terracotta it's not used a whole lot pretty much due to the fact that there's no other variations of it but i think just this on its own will work really well as a roof let's try it out looking good looking good but we need to figure out let's start detailing this thing let's first figure out where we're gonna put windows i'm gonna put four up there like that and then we gotta figure out how to add windows to this weird one here maybe something like this and this yeah those will work and we'll put one in the middle too now we'll put one way up there on top of the tower and we can copy the same pattern here on the back i think we'll put some shutters on these windows here as a little bit of a new style okay to work out these windows let's pillar up and use full blocks this time and then for some window framing we're actually going to try to use mangrove wood this is definitely something new but i think it works well with the acacia yep i think that works to fill up this blank space on this wall right here i think i'm going to put a chimney maybe right here will be good we're going to use walls which is something i don't normally do but we're going to try it we're at the point where we really just need to work on adding a few last details to this door built right there and door number two we should also probably fill in the floor over here let's make it a little bit nicer inside here and it's pretty tight in here but for one day if we decide to come back here and build an interior on this i think it can look really cool this has been a pretty big episode but one more final detail i need to add is detailing this roof check out this sight line this is just such a cool angle of the village and also if we loop around here this is a pretty cool view too especially from a distance and of course we're going to come back in a future episode and work on detailing all the outer areas but i want to put something here in this central market area i think we should put a fountain in here. What does that look like? I'm not exactly sure. We're gonna have to figure that out. And pretty much disregard where the coarse dirt is right now. This will probably all be coarse dirt, I imagine. So where's the center of this area? I'd say I'm about on it. This will be a pretty large part of the area, but I think I like it. This is just gonna involve adding some pretty intricate details here and seeing how we like it. I think this is a good shape. And in terms of details, something like this will be good. I think this might work once we get some water in there. Ooh, but I actually don't like how it covers up the sight line so what if this is just like a pool of water maybe sort of a large well for this area even though there's a river right next to it we can just ignore that yep this is a nice little detail that adds that really helps fills up this really open space and i'm really excited to come back here in a few episodes and get this all detailed out we built this city street here and it's really helped to fill out the village however there's only 10 days left in the year and it might seem like quite a while however it's a busy time of year with the holidays and everything so i kind of gotta get going on this village so today i'm gonna be building two separate houses this one here which is pretty large and this little diagonal thing that's gonna be a tower as well as if we head over here there's a small building tucked back here what exactly are we gonna do for these builds though well i'm not quite sure well hold on there is actually one thing i wanted to try for this what if we use bamboo for the roof and then some sort of white block for the walls we tried to do white terracotta last time maybe we could try white terracotta and mud bricks usually goes well with white terracotta let's see if this oh yeah that's a pretty good combination i like that a lot we're gonna use this i think and then for the smaller house back here we could try to use cherry wood i've never 
never really used cherry wood in a build before, so that might be what we try. This build first starts with giant cobblestone tower, so let's work that out right now. I'm gonna replace this stone outline with tough, and then we'll slowly work from tough to cobblestone all the way to the top. And I want this to be one of the taller things in the city, but not quite as tall as this, so we can still see it behind it. And hold on, I just had this idea now this open area could be a pretty cool animal pen. Maybe this is like a sheep farm or something. And this would have enough space to put a small wool farm in it if we wanted to. So yeah, I like that idea. Let's go with that. Hold on, hold on. New plan. I need one more block that's gonna work in this gradient. And I know, I think I know exactly what we need. Acacia logs. Acacia logs, I believe, are just slightly darker than tough. And it works for the perfect gradient. Just look at that. And that involves us pretty much tearing this down. But that's alright. It's what happens. Another huge inspiration I've recently had is to actually try to fill up this village with villagers. Which is not an easy thing because villagers love to run away and get killed by mobs or fall off of cliffs and die so we're really gonna have to make this village pretty protected for them but i think it could be cool if this is a contained area where we had villagers roaming free it would really add a ton of life to this area because i feel it's pretty lifeless right now to be honest I, so i think in our final episode where we come back and detail everything i'll try to make a villager breeder and add a ton of villagers to this area it's gonna look so cool oh yeah that gradient is so cool i'm happy i decided to do that but right now what we need to do is try and see what a bamboo roof looks on that tower wait i hear mobs in the floor all right where where are they that's why there we go the roof design we're gonna use for this tower is is pretty much completely based off of something i did a few years ago like three years ago now back at the end of 2020 i made a hardcore episode that i never posted but i built this little tower in it and i still to this day like how that roof turned out so i'm recreating it here and after hours of grinding it's done. I think we might just have enough spruce wood to finish this, but we're gonna have to get more for the rest of the build. Oh yeah, actually we're gonna need a whole lot more. Hold on. So we can head up here to our logging area and place down one of these big spruce trees. And generally these last me a while, so let's just plant one or two of these and we should be good on spruce for this episode. Yeah, check out all that spruce wood. That should be enough, maybe. Back up here, let's finish off this roof design. Oh yeah, check this out. This is not a bad design. I mean, it's quite a lot different than something I would have built today but then again it still fits and it still works well and it felt kind of weird building the same thing again like three three years later it sounds like i've kind of made a mob farm in here yeah a little bit and of course as usual this tower is looking pretty boring right now but but just like every other house the details will come in at the end one detail i do want to try right now though is hold on is there a spider there is a spider up here i want to try using this different kind of bamboo to kind of break up this roof a tiny little bit oh yeah that's good just a tiny tiny little variation and it adds quite a bit though now let's get started on the actual house portion of this and help this whole build come together grab our white terracotta and our mud bricks we need more mud bricks and looking over here from this angle i'm realizing i need to make this house relatively low so it doesn't block too much of the rest of the city it's mostly over there to the side the only thing it's really going to cover up from this angle is the greenhouse which is fine with me let's start with our foundation here i think i'll make it two or three blocks tall depending on how it looks mm, something about this isn't quite right let's switch over to cobblestone and tough instead yeah that's much better time to get some spruce placed down some of the areas will be jutted out like this and others won't let's go ahead and start peeling up our framing pretty much how we normally do it then we'll try out our new wall type here with the terracotta and for this little jut out here let's try to make this all mud as a little bit of an accent wall yeah check this out this is looking great in my opinion now it's time to place all of our bamboo on top i'm getting started with the bamboo roof here and i think it's looking pretty good it's gonna be kind of awkward here because there's lots of weird corners but in my opinion it's a farmhouse so it's meant to not be perfect and also i think it'll just make it look better honestly having the weird imperfections make it look more unique and i get asked a lot why i don't use stairs for the roof i do i still do occasionally like my starter base i think has them but i don't know it's just a style i'm liking right now for some reason it's just a stylistic choice it's unique and i'm sure i won't always build like this i'm sure my building style will be completely different just in a few months but for now this is what i think looks cool and yeah wow Wow, look at this roof this is really good it's looking pretty good from all angles especially this one over here i think i have nailed i still think i need to work on this side here maybe fix this wall a little bit and the front sides the front sides 
pretty good. Hold on, I have an idea. To make this roof more defined, let's stick it out one more block. Yep, there we go. I think that helps quite a bit. And looking at the city from above, I just realized I did this completely by accident, but I think we have one of like almost every color roof. It wasn't what I was going for, just naturally how it went, what I thought would go good, and I guess it was to have every single color like this. To be honest with you, this tower is pretty huge compared to the build, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I like the style. It's really unique. But let's hop up here and do the same thing we did before with the last roof and make a whole lot of these bamboo mosaic blocks and add them into some detail. But another detail idea I have is... One second. Taking these blocks, don't worry, they won't stay green. And then we can strip them like that. Mm, I don't know. I kind of like just the plain roof still. Um, yeah, let's just stick for the plain roof. I, for some reason, I just don't really like it. I'm not sure. Next up, let's grab some glass so we can put some windows in. I think in this case, we'll go fully light gray. But I'm out of light gray dye from all this building. So we can just pick up some flowers around here. And I still need to build something around this iron farm, don't I? Yeah, oh my gosh, it's so full. Let's put some windows in the tower first we're gonna do something like this hold on we need some trap doors i craft so many trap doors something like this should be pretty cool we can do that on all four sides i think for the windows i think i'm gonna add this oak shutter right here like this and then do our regular thing with the spruce for an awning this is where the entrance will be we've got a large space here i think we should fill it with some sort of large bay window type thing like this i think this will be cool same windows back here are done nice and simple design looks great and i think we can just maybe do that same window design back here again we are gonna need a bit more glass though and we have we have no sand do we that can be fixed pretty easily a little bit of underwater sand mining here next to our base i'd love to be able to somehow make it so that the townspeople can get down here to this water because i think uh it, it almost nearly goes out to the ocean we might have to turn this into an actual canal someday but that seems like a lot of work and a lot of terraforming so maybe we'll come back to that eventually let's drop all this sand in the smelters and head back to finish up our final window and i'm looking at this spot right here and i think it makes and i think it'd be a good spot for a chimney but i want to do something a little different because we've already done a lot of these big ones so i'm thinking just a real skinny one made out of walls just like a single wall will do well. This one's double wall, but that's a little bit too big for what I'm thinking of. And I'd love to use some bricks, but I guarantee you I'm completely out of... Oh, I'm out of bricks. Looks like we're heading back to the sand mine to get some clay this time. I really need to figure out how to uh, trade with villagers for bricks because I never use villagers and I use bricks a lot. All right, I spent like three years smelting bricks. Let's build this up a little bit. Let's see how it looks. Still don't know if I'm gonna have enough, but we'll see. Something like that. And then we'll put the soul campfire because these aren't these ones aren't as bright, but they still produce smoke, which is what we want. Uh, let's slow it down one more block. That's better. Like we said before, this is gonna be a sheep farm. So I think we should go ahead and figure out how we're gonna be building this pen. I'm liking the idea of using mangrove roots as a fence. I think those will look like a pretty good medieval fantasy fence. And is better than using regular fences at least let's terraform this land so it has a little bit more of a slope to it now let's lay out this pen here i think this shape will be good and it all has to be like two blocks tall at least or else the sheep can pretty easily escape yep this is pretty good and i'm pretty sure you can't escape this we can throw on a few slabs one and a half block areas to add more variety but i think we're pretty much good all right working on a little porch here that we can access the inside of the house from then on the inside we're gonna go simple and do a floor of dark oak plenty of space in here for us to try to figure out a automatic sheep farm that we can put in here but first before any of that we need to grab all of our sheep from here we'll just have to take them groups at a time like this this is a pretty long process i'm not sure how many of these sheep are actually gonna end up in there we'll see to be honest this is probably enough and we can always breed more if we need to i'm just gonna go around now and get rid of most of these ones at least the colored ones because they look so unnatural in the world I'll leave the light gray one. In fact, I think I want to dye all the ones inside the pen light gray so they look a bit more realistic. And we can now finally get rid of this ugly pen hundreds of days later. Let's find some dye. Let's see if 25 dye is enough to get all these sheep. Kind of close. Only a few more. You know what? Let's make some white sheep as well.
well. I think the design that's gonna fit best in this house is gonna be a design by ENX04. And I've made many farms by him before, especially the last season. And these farms always work great and they're super easy as well. To make this farm, we need glass, a bunch of leaves, dirt, a good amount of slabs. We'll use jungle slabs because they have a lot of jungle wood. We need six pistons for some reason. We're gonna need two dispensers as well so we have to craft two bows and then make them one at a time i hate crafting dispensers so first we need to dig out a five by seven little trench here and this farm uses this weird torch burnout mechanic where the torch flickers like that for a little bit then burns out which is kind of weird but i guess whenever grass grows there it powers the torch again which shears all the sheep which is interesting it's a really unique design for a sheep farm and then we'll have two dispensers on top which will shear sheep on either side there we go place trap doors down here to make it easier to put the sheep in i believe we need to get six sheep inside of here that shouldn't be too difficult right all right they seem to be in line let's get going these first two in here one two three four five and six should be coming right in and we can't have all 16 colors but i just need to pick the 12 most important for now we can make a better wool farm later but to be honest i don't find myself using many of the colors so let's just pick a few of the important ones i think i want two light gray sheep orange red brown green if we have it i have a cactus farm i totally forgot we built this cactus farm at the start of the month and i just haven't checked on it how has it been doing we have been loading this area the whole time and Hey, it's not bad. That's kind of bad. It's all right. I think I want a black one and a dark gray one. And we can keep a white one as well. So that's two, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. We can also probably make a cyan one since that color is pretty dull enough to fit in good into the city. So that'll use with two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, we need one more. We'll go for yellow. Actually, you know what? Let's do purple. Okay, there we go. That's our first holding cell. We now need to push glass down on these sheep like this. So I'll go ahead and use buttons and pistons to push the trap doors and the glass down onto the sheep. And they're all lined and they're good according to the video. Now we just gotta repeat the process real quick and here is the farm done. And you can see why I hid it in a house. It's disgusting, but it actually, it actually works. Every time that grass grows, it shears every single sheep in there, which produces quite a bit of wool. And I'm pretty happy to say that the wool farm here is done. So let's move on to our second house back behind the village. And we need to figure out what we're gonna build this out of. I'm thinking mangrove wood because mangrove wood is a block that appears in a lot of the houses so it only really makes sense to have a second house here made out of the red wood and i think for the house itself i think just a simple oak wood house would do fine for this We've gathered up a bunch of materials that we're going to need, a lot of birch and a lot of mangrove. And I think we're going to use mangrove for the frame, which is something I haven't really done yet, ever. So let's try that out. And I think we'll do it in a quick time lapse. I actually really like the unique blocks we used for this house. The regular mangrove logs and especially these roots is something I've just never used before in a build. But I think it actually fits not too bad. Right now I'm sort of planning ahead and trying to figure out how we're going to keep villagers safe inside of here. So I'm putting up a wall between these two houses here. Another thing I've been wanting to do is replacing this big courtyard area with mostly coarse dirt. It's going to leave us a lot of room to add some details to like market stands and different wagons and carts and stuff like that in the future. Hey, look at that. Our gate it's actually working. Yeah, that's much better. This area feels much more like a busy city area, and we'll be back to work on it in a few episodes. This is it. After spending the last month building the city, we only have two days left in the year to finish it. This video was erasing us the clock to finish the city, filling it with details and life. Stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to talk about how this video series is going to change how I make content forever. Oh, and by the way, if you want to explore the city for yourself, you can download it on my brand new Discord server for free, which we'll talk about more at the end of the video welcome back to the finale of my minecraft hardcore city series we're up on top of this mountain right now collecting a bunch of gravel for coarse dirt and you can see our city in the distance this is the first time i've really gotten this view of it but it's pretty cool we are way under 100 hours left in the year and i do not have very much time to finish this at all there's a lot of details i want to add i want to make it completely villager proof and add a bunch of villagers but the details are the first hard part of course so let's go around this mountain collecting a ton of gravel and 
we can head back down and get to work on the detailing. Let's take all our gravel and combine it with our dirt to make a ton of coarse dirt because there's like quite a few areas here I want to fill in with coarse dirt. Like this area over here, I want to make this into a market area because of how open it is. That's a whole lot better, but there's an... But something I want to do in these big areas is like how our storage room is over here with all this packed mud and regular dirt and grass and stuff like that. I don't know if I have enough mud to be honest, which could be a problem. I'd rather not have to go to a mangrove swamp, but we might not have a choice here. Let's see. Okay. Just, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be enough. Let's find out. Yeah, I mean, this looks really cool, but I just don't know if I have enough packed mud. I really don't think I do. This is such a cool look that it's worth it for me to head to the mangrove swamp and grab some more mud. We also have a bunch of wheat we need to gather. And back to placing packed mud. This is just such an improvement. This is such a cooler design than just the boring coarse dirt. And I'm going to keep carrying it around here. With all this laid out, the first thing I want to do is finally put a bridge here. I've been just jumping over the river and that's kind of a problem. What are we going to build? it out of maybe some man we don't need mangrove i'm not getting any i think we'll have something like this here i want it to go up pretty far we'll just do some sort of weird stone brick designs in order to keep the villagers from breaking into our village i'm gonna put up some walls across some of these areas here with spruce and oak wood for this right here we're gonna do a wall and then build up something like this yep that looks good we've now got walls surrounding this pretty much whole village area here as you can see i don't think there's any easy way for the villagers to escape but then again i'm not really sure next up in this open area here i want to put a bunch of market stands for the villagers to sell some stuff. That helped fill in this area so much, but I still want to add some more details. I want each of these stands to actually sell something. I'm not quite sure what exactly, but let's take a look at what we got. I first want to have a stand that sells plants so we can grab some pots and some leaves and stuff like that. Let's see how this turns out. Another stand I want to do is honey. So if we grab some honeycomb from up here. But before we do that, let's finish up this plant one here. Yeah, I think that's perfect. For the bee one here, we're going to put some nests behind it. First, we got to put them on top of campfires. And then we can use some item frames to display items and use the data to hide them like that. We can also have some candles as if they're selling candles here because these are made out of beeswax anyway. So that makes sense. You know what? What I can do is actually put villager work stations behind these counters so that the villagers will actually work there i think that'd be pretty cool like if we put a composter there a villager farmer villager should come behind there and then maybe for this one we could do a butcher i think that'd work back behind this stand let's clear a little area here i have an interesting idea for a build just like this we're gonna have two pillars with this mangrove log here in the middle and a campfire underneath it kind of looks like it's cooking a piece of meat here the butcher's workstation is a smoker so we're gonna put that right here and then give it a real small chimney coming out the top here that'll work and then we'll use some item frames to display some food for the fisherman build here i'm gonna keep it really simple i just want to put one or two fish but i don't have any fish yet so let me fix that we can go ahead and just fish in here and building the village like this making it villager proof or villager safe is really constricting like it means i can't place a lot of detail blocks like composters and barrels too freely and it also means i have to really really heavily defend the village and light everything up but i also think it's a fun challenge and i think having the villagers around will add a lot to the world and two fish should be enough there we go with that out of the way in this area right here pretty detailed we can come back i want to try to build a couple trees right now there's one in particular over here uh i can't go that way one in particular over here i'm going to use this schematic for it. this is based on the smaller version of the big yellow tree we have over there so let's hop in a time lapse and build this real quick. I really like these trees. They're pretty unique, but I think they add quite a bit to the area and it's something you never really see in any other world. So that's cool. I think I want to add another tree maybe over here. I have a taller version of this tree here in a schematic. So let's try it out and see how it looks here. I think we'll put it right here. The tree is all done and it is very tall, but not too bad. 
Some of the proportions are kind of weird, but it's okay. It's a tree. It's not meant to be perfect. This city is really starting to come together, but there's still a lot of empty spaces. Some of them can just be filled in with bone meal like this, and they'll look perfectly fine. Not everything has to be extremely detailed. It's important to have some negative space too in these builds to help give some contrast. I don't know if contrast the word, but help highlight the more detailed stuff. There are some areas though that do really need builds. Like I think here, I want to put a wheat field, a little tiny wheat field, so we can actually have a villager that's taking care of it. Let's build this real quick. We need to put down some water. And then I think I'll put a lantern as well so we can keep mobs from spawning here. Simple enough, but once the wheat grows in like that, it's gonna look great. Over here, some random detail ideas I have is doing something like this where we're gonna put potatoes on here. But before they finish cooking, we're going to extinguish the fires. So they're just sitting there, kind of an interesting detail. And then I'm also going to put some of these beehives down here. These kind of look like barrels or crates or something. Something. Then we'll also place down some pots over here. Random spam of details. There's just a lot going on right there. And as it starts to get towards night, I'm realizing we need some sort of light source here in the village. So let's see if we can get a cool enough design here. Simple, but I think that works. Let's place that around the area. This area here is still a little bit too open. I think I want to at least add like a cart and maybe some barrels or something like that. Here's how our cart's looking. And I think we should put some pumpkins in it maybe we do have a pumpkin patch right outside the city so that makes sense let's also add some of these note blocks as barrels over here there we go that looks decently like a pile of crates i can't actually use barrels because of the dumb villagers but it's okay over here i'm gonna place some of these bookshelves i don't think i have books to fill them with but i think they're a good detail especially when they're filled with books for books i'm gonna think i believe one of my villagers trades books so if we go over here does this guy yeah he does have bookshelves okay we need to get a couple of these and then these break down into the three books a piece let's take all these books and fill this up i've never really had the chance to use these blocks before now but this is a really cool detail in order to fill up this area over here i want to make i think i want to make another small crop field here this one can have carrots in it i'm gonna put up a boundary like this with with some oak on top. I only have two carrots right now, so let's just use them to spread them out bone meal them and then grow some more and simple enough that is done i do think we could use a small tree over here though so let's use the same kind of color we were using for the bigger ones this looks pretty close to granite at this point all we really have left to do is go through the village and figure out what areas still need lit up we can use this mod called mini hut to see exactly the light level of everything and the only time we have to worry is when their light level is red like that pretty much the only places where that's the case is the roofs and i think the best way we're gonna be able to add light to all these roofs is probably gonna be glow like and it's pretty subtle and it gives off a subtle amount of light so it shouldn't be too noticeable let's head over to this cave and see if we can spot some yep i see some right there already this is perfect and i'll just use bone meal to spread this everywhere so we can cheer it right up let's use the lichen to light up some of the area around the city so that hopefully zombies can't find their way in i just spent a while making sure there's absolutely no surface that's not lit up here I I used lichen. I used the I used the glow lichen all around here. You can see that pretty much all the outside grass nearby, as well as all of the roofs, should be completely lit up, just subtly enough to where you can't really notice it, but mobs still won't spawn. So you know what that means. It is time for us to add our villagers. I want to figure out exactly how many we're going to include. So we're gonna need a workstation for all of them, as well as beds for all of them. We can put a composter in here for a farmer. We have a second composter here, then a barrel that makes three, four five six our seventh is going to be a lectern inside of the library here our eighth is this fletching table here and i'll continue to place maybe around 20 of them throughout the village and see how we end up all the job sites are in place we need to get some villagers over here the problem is i don't know if there's any villagers left in the village which could be kind of bad it sort of seems like they all died and if that's the case i'm not sure how i'm going to get villagers they are all dead what do i do oh hold up oh, of course i totally forgot these this iron farm has villagers i don't really want to tear apart the iron farm but then again this design kind of sucks and i say that but it's gotten a lot of iron but they won't even spawn on it it doesn't work how it's intended so maybe i should just the villagers from here yeah let's take these villagers but before we steal them let's hop into a time lapse and build up a breeder
It's done, and I know it's absolutely disgusting, but we're just gonna leave it for now because I don't really have time to fix it. Don't worry, I'll either cover it up with a build later or just tear it down. We'll see. Let's go ahead and build a rail line that takes us all the way there so we can get these villagers stocked up. All right, got both of them in a minecart. Let's push them to the breeder. Come on. Ugh. It's gonna take a while for the village. It's gonna take a while for this to start working. So in the meantime, let's set up a rail system to get them out of here. There is actually one in here already because I threw them some carrots. So let's test this out out and see if it works. I went AFK for a while, came back, and I think this should be enough villagers. So let's send them off one at a time and get these guys loaded into our village. Let's release these guys and see if they die or not. They're definitely gonna die, but oh well, that's fine. Who cares? Oh yeah, look at this. He's working behind the counter. This is shouldn't be his counter. He should be over here, but oh well, that's fine. And yep, here he goes. He's escaping already. I filled up this village with a lot of villagers and it's sort of working. There's also one's getting caught in the river but i think they're kind of finding their way back eventually this project after a month of hard work that last clip was recorded right before the new year i'm recording this outro here on the first day of 2024 which is going to be a big year for this channel i'll explain why but first let's take a look at our finished product That CD project was amazing, but it left us with barely any materials left. Let's go ahead and build a ton of farms and maybe even the biggest build yet. In all of Minecraft, there's one block I hate more than any other, mangrove wood. Now don't get me wrong, I love building with it, but when it comes to gathering it, I mean, who designed these trees? They're so annoying. But I think there's still a way to solve all our problems and even make a super cool build in the process. This is a mangrove farm. It's a complex redstone machine with the one goal of destroying mangrove trees by using all of these TNT dupers up here. It's pretty complex. And I had the great idea of covering this with a giant watchtower to look over our world. If we hop back into the main hardcore world, we have our main city here and this hill right next to it, which would be great for putting this farm in this tower. Not only does it look over the city, it'll also look over our future port city that I'm gonna put down here by the water. This build is just huge though. I think it might just be the biggest single structure I've ever built. So we need to flatten down this hill a little bit more to give us some more space. With this area flattened out now, we can head back to our storage room and actually work on gathering all the resources we need for the farm. We need exactly one chest of resources. That might not sound too bad, but there's quite a bit of different random materials we the need. The four main ones that we don't really have are coral, slime blocks, target blocks, and a whole lot of obsidian. But let's just focus on the materials we already have. We need to find a cave near our base in order to gather some redstone, because obviously this takes a lot of redstone components. Here we go. I've somewhat explored this cave before and nearly died but I guess I'm going back. Jeez. Okay, this might be a little dangerous. For some reason, I still don't have a totem in this world. I'm gonna see if I can make it to a thousand days, but maybe not. Let me know in the comments if I should stop being an idiot and actually just get a totem. Luckily, down here at the deep slate layer, there's just plenty of redstone and also skulk. I do not like being around skulk. Hey, diamonds. Diamond, just one, okay. Back from the cave, let's pillar up all this redstone. This had better be enough. I journeyed out here to the desert. I'm thinking this could be where we find a coral reef if it's gonna be anywhere. I just need to explore around the edges of this. I think there's an ocean, if I'm not mistaken. Is there a coral reef up there? I think there could be. That looks like the right watercolor. Whoa, check out that terrain in the distance. It's like an amplified world out there. I've got to build something out there someday. That's so cool. And coral reef, what do you know? I spent just a few minutes getting all the coral we needed. We specifically needed the coral fans, which somehow duped the TNT. I don't know how it works. You'll see how it works. Hold on, this is the perfect spot to grab some obsidian if we don't die in the process.
We got almost all our resources in both of these barrels, except for a couple right here. The one thing we're missing is slime. However, there's some pretty simple slime farms we can build nowadays in a swamp biome. So I think we'll head there and build something like that. And this thing was so easy. It's literally just a hole in the ground at the perfect light level for the slimes to jump into. And it's as simple as that. You just AFK high in the sky and you're done. So that's exactly what I did. With a nice long AFK session done, we can go ahead and take a look at how our farm produced. Oh yeah, check that out. That'll be plenty. We really only need less than a stack. I'll admit this isn't the fastest slime farm I've ever made, but it seems like it did the job. Brought everything up here to the top of the hill. Now we can get building. And of course I'm following tutorial. There's no way I could ever do anything like this ever. When I flip this trapdoor right here, one of two things is gonna happen. Either all six of those TNT are gonna drop down in like a timed matter, or it's gonna blow itself up. Come on. First two down. Second two down. And all six! I built it right! It's a miracle! That took so long, oh my gosh. I gathered a ton of bones from our skeleton grinder, so let's throw all of these into the machine. I think we're ready to turn the farm on. Let's hit this lever and see how it goes. Finally being able to run this farm was like the greatest payoff ever. There's still quite a few changes I can make to it in the future, but for now it works great and it actually produces a ton of logs. Man, I love this farm. Look at all of this mangrove wood. This would have taken so so long to mine by hand. It also gives a bunch of these roots and even moss carpet, which is which is kind of cool. Before we try to build any more farms, I want to start the process of covering this up, which is going to be a big process. The tower is positioned on top of a, a pile of like boulders. The boulders go up to about there. So we need to grab some stone, some deep slate, some tough, and get building. I really like the gradient I used on these. It's super simple, but it's also really cool. The boulders are now built up, which looks so cool. And of course we have a lot more building to do, but I think we need to work on a farm right now. There's a very specific farm I need because I don't have a food source in this world, or at least a good one. Right now, when I want to get food, I have to go to this pumpkin patch and chop down a bunch of pumpkins, which is really tedious and annoying. Then I take those pumpkins and train it with this villager, which gives me one carrot for every two pumpkins, which is so inefficient. I think I want to build the same type of farm that I used for my food source last season a hogland farm they produce so much cooked pork chop and they're pretty simple to build let's go ahead and make a hole in the roof oh i missed there we go let's see if we can't do this first try oh no hey we did it there we go and just like that we are on the nether roof i'm at the nearest crimson forest which is a little ways away we just need to go ahead and build up this hogland farm real quick because we're down to our last 12 pieces of bread Oh yeah, check that out. That's a ton of pork chop. It also produces quite a bit of leather as well, which is always nice. I'm so happy we built up this farm. It's super simple, but then again, it's going to give us food for like forever. I'm probably never going to need to make a food farm again. But I think for right now, the best thing I can possibly do to work on this is start gathering some of the more difficult blocks. Not difficult, just time consuming. There's a lot of oak, a lot of birch, and a whole lot of sandstone. I figured the best way to get all the wood was be doing some deforesting. So I picked a couple of forests by the water to completely remove. Hopefully this will open up some areas for us to build cities and villages later on. I think we will actually be able to make a, quite a bit of progress right now because I do have some sand, smooth sandstone already smelted down here which is pretty nice we're starting with this gradient as our foundation which is really going to help with the giving it a sense of scale later on and then moving right along to the spruce and oak ring that goes around the top of it I also decided to build some of these deck platforms to all the sides, which is going to be super convenient once we get Elytras, which we still don't have one for some reason. We've got a long way to go, but it's looking great right now. The biggest problem I'm running into right now is how annoying it is to smell all of our sandstone. This right here is our only furnace in the entire world. Just these two, and it's really, really slow. So, of course, I have a perfect idea for our next farm. I want to build a super smelter, and instead of trying to cover such an awkward farm in a build i decided just to dig out a huge cave that we can detail 
With the room dug out, we're gonna actually try to make it look good now. So let me figure out what pattern we're gonna use for the walls. I have an idea. Oh yeah, I think I like that. Let's go with this. To make the ceiling look better, let's actually make it look like a cave. So I'm gonna add walls, blocks, stairs, slabs, just to give it a really rough look. This looks great. It almost looks like arches or something, which makes the room look so cool. But for the floor, I think we're actually going to keep with the cave theme and do a dirt floor. Oh yeah, I'm really liking this color scheme, but I think we can make it even better. I want to get some of those glowberry plants to hang from the ceiling. I don't have any right now, but I think we can go and try to find some in a lush cave somewhere and then build a tiny little farm for them. Yeah, this is exactly where I remember it. I think I already pillared down here before to get the rooted dirt so we can just follow this back down. I think this should lead right to a cave. Here we are. I think we'll build the glowberry farm in this wall right here. It should be relatively simple just to set up a bone meal one if we put a dispenser up wrong way, of course. If we put a dispenser facing into it and then two observers facing into each other, we just need to retract this observer away somehow. I'm not really smart enough for this. Let's try this. Oh, I'm very dumb. So if we load this dispenser with bone meal, maybe this will work. Hey, there we go. Nice and simple. We can set this thing and let it do its job for a little bit. And then to make this fit in better, we'll also put a little bit of an actual garden of these things and just have them hanging up here. That will work. Let's add a whole lot of these around. It's looking so much better already. And with the room worked out, let's design this super smelter. I'm not going off a tutorial. They're pretty simple. I'm just going to design my own. I'm super happy with this design. It looks really industrial, which is cool. And there's a rail to get all of the items to smelt across all the hoppers. And then there's a water stream for all the fuel. The thing is, what fuel are we going to use? I was trying to think. Could do bamboo, could do kelp. Those are pretty big farms, though. I eventually decided the best fuel method is going to be carpet duping. I know that's a bit controversial. Some people are very strict against no duplication glitches in their world. But in my opinion, at least, if it's a feature in the vanilla game that I can do in hardcore without any mods, without any cheats, it's completely fair game. I won't be mad if Mojang patches it, it's a bug, it's a glitch, but I'm going to use it for as long as it's available to me. And we'll leave this thing running while we head back over and continue building up the tower, and don't worry, I'll build an entrance here someday. We're just about ready to keep building up the tower, but something we're going to need is glass, so this gives us an opportunity to test out our new super smelter here. I already have all the glass I need, but I want to change the color to cyan, so if we just throw some cactus in here and see if this thing works. Let's give this a test. Hold on, I totally forgot to connect these two hoppers here but we can just grab it from here for now and that is not bad just like that we got all the dye we need so let's head up here and continue building up the tower Oh yeah, that's a lot of progress right there. We've gotten pretty far, but for some reason I thought it'd be a good idea to use lecterns up here as a railing. I don't know why I did that. They're so expensive. However, this does give us an opportunity to make a brand new farm. Lecterns take bookshelves. However, I don't have any sugarcane at all. I'm pretty sure this over here is the only sugarcane in our entire base. The farm is all set up. I do not have enough sugar cane to fill up the whole thing yet. And I'm sure you know how this works. This observer just detects when the sugar cane gets high enough that it pushes all these pistons. All we need to do to make sure this works properly is add some ice so the items slide right past between the water streams. And don't worry, we'll build a build around this at some point. I don't want to leave it like that forever. I went ahead and crafted all the lecterns I needed right before adding the second to the last part of our tower. Just check this out. This is coming together so well. As one final detail, we need to add a domed roof up here, which is going to require quite a bit of mangrove wood. Luckily, we have a solution for that.
And with just a few more minutes of building, the roof was done. And if you're enjoying this kind of video style, make sure you subscribe. I'm only going to be evolving my content throughout the year, so make sure you stick around. As amazing as this looks, a build is only as good as the environment you place it in. And to make the environment fit the build better, we need to do a few different things here. As always, we need a path connecting the build, so I built one winding up the hillside made out of packed mud. I was actually trying to avoid using packed mud this season, but it's just so good, I can't resist. Once we worked that out, I moved on to adding some smaller rocks around the boulders to really tie it into the rest of the terrain and it's things like that to just make a huge difference it's small but it makes a huge difference and after spamming a whole bunch of bone meal at the ground the build was officially done thanks to all these brand new farms we can start our next huge project I just built all of this for some Minecraft villagers. Why? Well, aside from being loud and annoying, they're also extremely overpowered. <laughs> oh my god! So rather than building a boring old trading hall, I'm gonna build a mega build for each of the villager types, starting today with the farmer. And of course, I came up with a perfect five-step plan to do this, and I can't wait for you to see some of these builds at the end. Our first step is taking this really ugly landscape and turning it into something that'd actually be cool to build on. I was able to cover my sugarcane farm up pretty easily with just a bit of terraform but there's a lot of uneven and even snowy landscape over here I just do not want for this build. So let's grab some dirt from our chests and head up to the build site where we can finally build some terrain that'll actually inspire us. By far the biggest problem we needed to fix first was this terrible ugly snow cap on this mountain. The upside to it is that it's super easy to shovel through the snow and shape it exactly how I want. Although it takes a long time terraforming it's always so satisfying. That snow absolutely eats through our shovels so I'm over here at the grinder trying to heal it back up and right back to it i have a huge terraforming project i want to take on sometime in the next few months and it's not going to be easy this kind of gives me a taste of what it's going to be like it's going to be so huge the nice thing about the snow is it makes it super easy just to mold the shape that we want and then put dirt over top it's actually kind of nice as i kept placing dirt i quickly came to the realization the double chest of dirt we had isn't going to be enough not even close to enough so what I had to do was travel out to a nearby jungle, which would be covered by trees so you can't really see the ground, and just mine up all the dirt. I filled my inventory up a couple times and that was hopefully all the dirt we need. The snow is all gone, or at least I thought it would be. The reason there's so many torches around here is because I've been at war with snow. I spent the last hours constantly fighting off the snow, and then more keeps coming. Every time I clear it, it, it snows again. It's so annoying. And in order to cover the ground and keep it from snowing, we can move on to phase two of our plan, building the crop fields. My plan is to take these crop fields that we have going on down here and carry that up the rest of this hill. If we're trying to put crop fields all along this terrain, it is way too rough and hilly. We need to smooth this out a lot. And with the magic of editing, all we have to do, there we go. The land is nice and smoothed out now, which is gonna give us a the perfect area to fill it in with all of the deep slate rings. This deep slate essentially serves as these old rundown walls that'll separate each of the crop fields. They look really good and they give a super nice contrast to the brighter crops. And I'm pretty much just spamming blocks, stairs, slabs, and walls all over the place. Check these out. These trees turned out so good. This one is perfect because it helps turn this path a little bit better. And then the one over here in the distance is great because it adds a lot of height to this area, which is going to be pretty flat. Flat. I actually saved some room over there to maybe put a windmill or something to give it some more height. From there, it was now field time. What does that mean? Well, we got to start planting all these fields, which is a very, very long process. I'll show you this first field here. This probably takes me almost an hour which sucks, but oh well. I'm well over like an hour into this, and to be honest, I'm looking for any shortcuts to make this field planting process easier, and I have one. Normally what I'll do is I'll just bone meal these carrots on the spot and then break them and replace them and then slowly multiply them. I think that made sense. But what we can do instead now is take a whole bunch of bones and use this new nano farm inside of one of our builds. We just gotta load it up with all this bone meal, turn on this, and I guess just spam down here. Something's not working. There we go. Now it's running great. Oh my gosh. This farm is really loud, but it's also going to be a great time saver. So let's sit here for a couple seconds. There we go. And oh my gosh, that was such a big time saver. I can't believe I didn't do that sooner. With these fields, I'm trying to do sort of a checkered pattern. 
So I think the next one up there should be a wheat field and then maybe some flower fields up there. That'd be so cool. Hold on, with our newfound method, I wonder how fast we could make like a medium sized field like this. I have a timer on screen. Let's do a bit of a field planting speed run. Three, two, one, and it didn't start. It started, all right, we gotta go, we gotta go. The first step to every field is getting these streaks where it's been like tilled or something. We're doing that with coarse dirt. Okay, that took just under five minutes. Now for the tedious part. This part's gonna screw me over. I need to put water all over the place, which is pretty annoying. I place a slab, water log it, and then place a lantern on top. That's my, that's my standard for everything else, but I think I have an idea to speed it up. I'm gonna grab a bunch more buckets, which I think will make it so that we don't have to come back to the water sources often, which will speed us up just a little bit. That's more like it. I think this should be all the light and water we need, so let's grab our hoe and start tilling all this land. Another pretty tedious part, but we are 13 minutes in. We're going for an all-time record right now. Even if I'm the only person in the competition, it's still pretty impressive, I would say. Just under 20 minutes in. We just need to get all the seeds we need. And now that I'm thinking about it, we don't even need to use the machine to get the seeds, I don't think. I already think I have a ton, honestly. Yeah, check this out. We have a ton in here. So let me just grab all those. And I feel like we can get this field fully done in under a half an hour. And stop the clock. There we go. Just under 26 minutes, we got this whole field finished that's just an idea of how long this is taking me it's time to build fields for the next five days in real life For this farm here, I want to make another flower field, but instead of the tall flowers like the one over there, I want to use these white flowers like this. The problem is I don't have nearly enough of them, but there's a super simple farm we can make for this type of flowers, which also give us a couple other colors as well. I just need a little bit of an open area and a plains biome, which I think this down here will work pretty well. It'll be cool to build some sort of house down here eventually. So let's count on a nine by nine space, place a row of nine iron blocks, then leave another nine block gap, and then place pistons at either side to push the grass back and forth, and then a note block facing into an observer at either side as well. This X is our triggers on either side and what are we triggering we're triggering these pistons which means we need a quick line of redstone same over here then we'll just surround the whole thing in iron blocks and to finish it up we gotta fence this in to make sure none of the flowers escape and then dig underneath to the middle where we need to place a dispenser facing up and then some observers to let this to let this dispenser know when it needs to fire fill it up with bone meal and bam there we go that should be a maybe working flower farm maybe maybe i'll place down some some chests so I don't get overwhelmed with items in the first two seconds and we'll see how it goes and hey it's actually working I still see a couple of these flowers in here so let me fill up my inventory like that and see if this works out hopefully it's so loud oh my gosh and don't get me wrong I produced a thousand yellow flowers a thousand red flowers but like 10 of the stupid white flower that I want so I guess at least we still have this farm for other types of flowers the blue ones the red ones and the yellow ones but other than that we're gonna have to pick these flowers by hand I think so let's Let's just do that. Eh, I mean, I guess we'll see how far these ones get me first, but it's not going to be too great, I don't think. Eh, okay, we got about halfway. Let me go out into the wild and collect at least another stack. Eh, 
and that was just the right enough. We actually have some extra. We have officially put in all of our crop fields, and this is looking so cool. It adds so much to our world, having all these different pops of colors. But like I was saying earlier, this is still pretty flat. There's the tree, which is great, but there needs to be something right in this open space. And that moves us right along to stage number three, building up some structures. I think we just start with a simple windmill. And in order to find that design, we need to take a quick trip back in time to a long ago season. Season two of our hardcore world. I have not been here in a long time. But the reason I came here is for one thing, look at this cool view, but also to take a look at our windmill design. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of this thing. I feel like the proportions are way off. The build is way too skinny and thin to be holding this giant propeller windmill. So I'm gonna steal this propeller design and just a whole new structure in the back. And I think I came up with a great design and created. And I already grabbed all the materials we're gonna need from our storage room. So let's grab a bunch of this stuff. Let's start with an outline of these brand new tough blocks, which I actually added to the world early, thanks to the experimental data packs. These are some of my favorite textures to build with right now. This is a pretty strong looking base. I'm then gonna throw in a bunch of this crimson as a big, pop of color to outline the base here. We can also throw in this brand new copper door, which fits the theme pretty well. Now we're going to work our way into birch for adding even another color here. And then sandstone will be the main thing we use for the tower of the windmill. I'm also incorporating these chiseled sandstone. I might just be the first person to ever use this block in the entire game's history. Then I'm going to kind of just do some weird stuff like this, I guess. For the windows here, I'm going to borrow a design I learned from Grian, which is to, which is a jump in side okay which is to jump inside here and place these brand new copper thingies and then scaffolding in front and that makes a really cool window then we can do our standard window thing i do every single time like this with a mangrove leaf and i'll go around to the other side and repeat that Ooh. Okay, mm, yep, that, this, this, this thing, and that. There we go. Eh, it's not a bad window, but I'm actually gonna use this scaffolding to get up here, I think. That's kind of convenient. For up here, I'm gonna use these dark oak slabs to cover up the creeper face on these sandstone blocks, and that allows us to let this top part here stick out one block, so we're gonna use oak wood for this, and then I'm gonna try to use chiseled bookshelves, because those have a cool texture on the back of them. I'll show you in a sec. That is a pretty cool texture over there, and then I'll go around and stacked stripped oak three blocks high at least please tell me this is enough i don't want to get more come on this no it's not enough ah oh uh, yeah don't mind me just gotta gather a little bit more wood here anyways where was i i need to finish this thing here punch out two more windows on the opposite sides to our same window design as before of course and for our roof we're gonna use some orange blocks here to make a bit of a dome there we go that shape is looking not bad for the top to make sure this thing doesn't catch on fire even though fire takes off i'm gonna add a little lightning rod with wool fence and then the rod on top but man i feel like this windmill is still missing something oh yeah i know what it is we need some foliage down here to help it tie into the landscape better and i mean i guess we could add the actual windmill part of the windmill that would make sense so we'll block out one two three like that and get some slabs to connect it to a few other places even though i feel like that shouldn't be how a windmill works i don't think it is oh well and then we'll branch out in all four directions for the sails themselves, I think this looks most like a kind of fabric, I guess. There we go. Take a look at that. It's looking so cool from a distance and it adds a ton to this area. Let's turn our focus to another build on top of this hill up here. And this is going to be where we put the bulk of our farming villagers. So it's got to be pretty large. For this build, I'm going to use a lot of gray blocks orange and yellow blocks and red blocks which is kind of a weird combo it's kind of a weird build but it's gonna be really cool you just gotta trust me this area here is generally where i'm gonna put it i'm gonna have to flatten it out a little bit but it's fine for now starting with the gray blocks we need so much stone for the foundation i'll take some stone bricks as well we need a bit of tough and a whole lot of deeps like this could be enough potentially i'm gonna throw down some chests up here to put all this stuff in and in order to get the rest of the deep slate we need as well as a bunch of andesite i'm gonna drop down here here hopefully we don't die and we're good have i ever mentioned how annoying it is to mine up deep slate well let me tell you it's pretty annoying it's so slow you know it's less slow mining in the site which is what we did next this is a lot more enjoyable you guys are always telling me how you want to see more resource gathering in my videos so here it is 
This is what I do all day. And as one final gray block, we gotta go into our shepherd's house and grab some light gray wool. We have plenty, thankfully. Let's move on to the red blocks, which is super easy because it's just crimson wood. Thankfully, we spent our entire last episode building this huge tower that stores an entire crimson wood farm, which is honestly the best farm to ever exist. Let's uh, throw in our bone meal, just like that. Hit a lever somewhere here. Where'd it go? Okay, this should be all the red blocks we need, I hope. Let's move on to the yellowish orange blocks. Starting with, funny enough, a entire stack of hay bales. Trust me, it'll look good in the end. The last few blocks were super easy. It was just like yellow terracotta, which I had in my storage, some orange concrete powder, which I had in my storage. And of course, everybody's favorite block to build with honeycomb. Yeah, that's right. I've been breeding up some bees over here specifically to get a ton of honeycomb, which is a weird choice, but it'll all make sense in a minute. Let's get building. Check this build out. I'm so proud of this. This is the perfect size to fit a ton of villagers inside. Both have pretty decent sized interiors and are very detailed all the way around. Next up though, we gotta figure out how to cure villagers and actually get them inside of there. A while ago, I set up a villager breeder over here, I think. It should be still working. There should be like way too many villagers in there. Oh, it's not so bad. There's a solid... 173 villagers right there. Oh my gosh. Let's see if I can't set up a system with some rails to get these guys infected by zombies and then cured up. Okay, I came up with a very strange system here, but hopefully this zombie should infect them if we send it on through. Maybe. Yep, there we go. Okay, then we can send this guy along like that. And let's do that four more times. Okay, I think if I throw the weakness right there, maybe it'll reach. It does. It reaches all four. That's perfect. Now we wait. Okay, their deals are pretty good, but we could definitely cure them a few more times or at least another time. You should be able to pull them right back up to this zombie and do it all over again. You know what I'll be doing for the next little while. After a bunch of curing and trading, we now have these maxed out villagers here. And I think the easiest way to do this is actually, hold on, let's make sure we divert the track away from the zombie. The best way to do this will probably be with one of these furnace minecarts, one of the most underrated blocks in the game for transporting stuff like this, because it doesn't take any powered rails at all. Come on. There we go. Let's get a bit of an interior on this thing to make this a little bit of a nicer place to trade with villagers. First, I gotta kind of move them out of the way. Uh, I don't know how to do this really. Let's start by ripping out the floor and replacing it with some spruce wood. Then we've got to put a roof on this thing. I'm gonna do something weird. I'm gonna use soul soil, cause why not? I've never used it in a build before. That's kind of the theme of this build, I guess. Trying new blocks. That's assuming I have enough for the thing, which I don't. So instead, we'll go through here and replace some of it with the soul sand like this yeah that's not re that's really not bad in order to enclose the villagers we need a couple of booths those will work out good and then we can throw in another guy somewhere like right here should be fine yep that'll be four for now obviously eventually we're gonna have way more villagers like over in this room but for now i think four of these villagers will do just enough for anything i need for them specifically emeralds and xp because i already have a good food source anyways let's build this up a bit and i'm gonna throw our villagers in there now before it it gets dark out because if these guys manage to die somehow i'm probably just gonna rage quit this world forever all of our villagers are in place but this room still has a lot of work left okay to break up this floor i want to put a little bit of a rug and i want to get back into using some oh, wrong way some glazed terracotta because i really like the texture and then maybe some orange wool in the middle yeah i think i like that we need to fix up this wall a little bit so i'll just throw in some tough i guess yeah i mean that works and then we can we can put put in some farmer's market type shelves here where we can put some crops on top. Let's throw in some crops on each of these and bone meal them up. Let's put some crops and sweet berries, I guess. Yep, there we go. To add some more color and detail up here, I'm going to throw in some um, moss and leaves and we'll even throw some hay bales up there. Maybe they're storing some up here. I'm super happy with how this interior turned out. It's making me think I need to do more interiors. I just tried to use a lot of unusual stuff in here like the hanging roots and stuff to make it feel 
feel very like in agriculture. A lot of plants, right? Yeah. This will basically function as a place for me to get XP, emeralds, and the occasional food type if I need it for some reason. I'm not sure when I'm going to need glistening melon slices. I don't even know what these things do. I really need to build a path and connect it to the windmill and the rest of the area. But we'll worry about that later because we're quickly approaching 1,000 days. What we need to do right now is get in the end game and finish this area of our world. If you're anything like me, you probably stick to the basic Minecraft gear because everybody says it's the best. But is it really? I'm going to find out for myself by collecting all the gear. The good, the bad, the incredibly grindy to get turtle. And of course, I'm going to build an armory to store it all and a whole lot more. If you're excited, make sure you leave a like and let's get started by finishing off our netherite gear. Well, actually, it's more like diamond gear right now. You see, I've survived nearly 900 days in this world all in diamond armor and it's not even enchanted all the way. We got to solve that. And I think the obvious thing we got to do is grab some villagers. The real question is how long is it going to take for this guy to give me protection? protection for. Dang, I was way off. It was under three minutes. I just got to grab a couple emeralds, buy up these books, and we're finally safe to move on to phase two of upgrading our armor. And ever since 1.20, if I want to get my hands on netherite, we're also going to need a smithing template, which can only be found in a bastion. If I'm going to die anywhere, it's going to be there. That bastion took way too long to find. But for now, we entered the bastion by getting shot into the lava by a blaze. Thankfully, I didn't take too much damage and I had a fire resistance potion. Immediately, we were swarmed by a bunch of the annoying piglin brutes. And I made my way to the center of the bastion where there was some crazy including loot. Including the smithing template we needed, thankfully. Okay, all right. Hit, hit. Oh, uh, these guys do so much damage. Oh my gosh. Come on, come on. No, 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 no. Half health. I think, uh, okay, okay. Okay. Oh, there's another one. No, no, no. Oh my gosh. Block in, block in, block in. Block. Uh. But that was the scariest thing in my life. These guys are so obscenely strong. I have full diamond gear right now. This is crazy. No, no, not this again. Not this again. Don't even think about it. Bing, bing. There we go. Okay, chest room in here. Some golden carrots. I'll take that. I'll take that. Ancient debris. Don't hit me off, please. I think that's it. I think we looted it. We got the smithing templates we came for. We got a bunch of netherite scrap and netherite ingots. Okay, let's see how many of these we can copy. Let's keep doing this. And we get seven, which will be nearly enough, I guess. And because we got two netherite ingots, we can actually, we can actually use it on two of our tools. Let's go for our silk touch pickaxe and our axe. There we go, our first netherite items in this world. It feels good, but we're still a long ways out. For phase three here, I grabbed a ton of beds, which means we got to head way down here in the nether to like level 20 or something and place our first bed and see what kind of ancient debris we can. That was not a good start. Let's go the other direction. I added this texture pack, which is going to make it way easier to see the ancient debris. We've got 25 ancient debris, which we'll head over to our super smelter and cook it all down and turn it into the netherite scrap. We can take some gold and netherite scrap and make six netherite ingots. And I almost forgot there's a whole other step of the smithing templates now. So let's fortune all of this up and make a few more of these things. There we go. And finally, after 900 days, take all of our armor and combine it with the netherite and that's yet another phase of this armor upgrade complete with all of our ender pearls now this should be enough we can prepare to find the stronghold i have no clue how close or far it could be but i think this will be enough let's throw our first eye and we're heading this way sounds good it broke the first one broke off to a bad start i'll say hmm i wonder if it's gonna be in this mountain i'm really hoping it's at a cool location to transform it in the future. Wow, what the heck? There's no way this is real terrain generation. How have I never seen this? This is crazy, actually. I have to build something. These are the tallest mountains I've ever seen in the game. What the heck? Ooh, wait, I think it just went down right here. Never mind. Okay, we're turning back the other way now. It seems like it's in this little valley here, which is super cool. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, this isn't a bad location either. These mountains are super cool as well. There we go. It is right here. Let's dig down. Here it is. We found it. And whoa, what? There's an amethyst geode inside of it. That's sick. All right, this stronghold is cool already. Let's see what else we can find down here. That is the worst chest I've ever seen. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, yes, there's a library. This is just what I was looking for. Let's see what kind of enchanted books we can find up 
here. Ooh, I forgot there's a smithing template in these. Whoa, these, hold on. These books are kind of good. These books are really good, actually. I'm taking all of them. And don't mind me. I'm just going to steal about a stack of bookshelves. I desperately need these back at home. Let's see what's in this chest. Another armor trim. I'll take it. And let's head on our way and look for this skulk room. Okay, that's kind of weird. Let's look for this stronghold portal room. I believe there's a chest up this ladder. Wow. Remember when I said I found the worst chest ever? Uh, I found one even worse. Check that out. And there it is, the portal. Okay, okay. Now, if it seems like this is going smoothly, get ready to watch the dumbest moment of my entire life. <sighs> oh my gosh. No, I didn't just do that. Are you kidding me? That's so annoying. No. That was like a couple hour mistake right there, but finally we can go to the end. Oh my gosh. Are we ready? Let's do it. Okay, we started out here on this platform. I want to really quickly get off of it. Two pillars down. Yes. Oh, that was cool. Okay. All right, we're going to head up to a tall pillar in order to get a good vantage point. They get the last few of these. Grab this one. Grab that one over there. There we go. That's everything. Why is it getting so far away? Come on, perch, please. Why is it damaging me so much? Oh my gosh. I was not expecting that. Jeez. I can't, I can't forget. I do not have a totem. This is bad. I'll toggle shaders because why not? It makes it look a little bit more intense. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, jeez. What the heck? Good thing that pillar was there. Yes. We did it. We survived. We beat the Ender Dragon finally in this hardcore world without a totem. And we're about to get a whole lot of XP. And I'll be back here in a sec to get that Elytra, but we need to restock our items real And pretty quick. much the main restock I wanted to do is just grabbing a bunch of rockets. Actually, what we can do is grab an anvil and check our library to see if we have an unbreaking and a mending book. We have mending, but we don't have unbreaking. That's all right. I'm not seeing any end cities yet. Looks like we have exploring on our hands right now. Hey. There's one right now. Let's hope it has a boat. Because that's where we're going to find our elytra. Oh, I don't think it does. Are you kidding me? Oh, well. We'll still loot it. And I believe all of these might have enchanted books as well. Which is going to help us enchant some of our gear later on. Like our crossbow or our trident or stuff like that. Another one. That's got to be a boat, right? Maybe? This is fun. I feel really safe out here. Where if I press one button, I fall into the void and die forever. And lose six months of progress. Fun. My favorite. So that's two end cities there. And neither of them have a boat really that sucks <gasps> oh my gosh oh my gosh i had a moment of panic there because i saw it didn't hit that ledge and it kept going down i thought for sure it was gonna hit the side of a block and i was just gonna <sighs> that got my heart pumping a little bit i won't lie there's yet another end city in view over here maybe this one has an end boat? Yes, it does. Okay, I'm heading straight for this one. I can come back to those other two. And there's even a gateway out here. That's really lucky, actually. Okay, I'm feeling a little safer about this throw here. Maybe. Not really. Yeah, we're fine. There we have it. Our first ever shulkers killed and first shulker shell. First chest has a curse of vanishing shovel. Curse of vanishing means nothing to me in hardcore because everything vanishes if I die. Okay. The end ship is like right here next to the building. So maybe I could use a shulker to fly up there or I could be even riskier and just do this and bam we're in we can loot these chests which are actually really good what the heck and then finally grab our elytra let's throw some mending on this thing and there we go we're ready to fly with this item checked off the list let's real quick go around this end and loot a ton of these end cities i turn on the moody brightness and the end looks so different in a good way i feel like this is how the game is meant to be played and it's how i would play if i wasn't making videos but it's a little hard to see i'll admit got another elytra in here it'll be nice to have a backup for whatever reason maybe if we want to have a guest on the world sometime it'll be nice to have some spare gear and there is no shortage of gear in all these end cities i'll tell you that okay 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 that's kind of low that's a little bit too low for me four hearts that was not fun all right i think we got plenty let's head on back and before we move on to the next item for the first time 
I want to see my world from the sky. Here it is. After six months of being on the ground, it's nice to be able to fly. Don't get me wrong, I'm going to try to keep using paths and just walking around as much as I can. Because honestly, Elytra is probably the most dangerous thing I can do in this world. I popped so many totems flying last season. So, for the most part, I'm going to stick to my chest plate. But we do need to make sure this Elytra is all enchanted up so we can check it off the list. I'm going to grab a few books from our library in order to craft a lectern. Let's see how long this one takes us. Okay, finally, that took a while. And let's quickly buy one before they twist their trades. Elytra unbreaking book and there we go that's another gear piece checked off the list the next item i want to knock off the list is the turtle shell it's a really underutilized helmet in the game that allows you additional water breathing and i think it'll actually be really cool to have especially if we want to try some underwater building in the future which would be so cool so i'm going to pretty much scan the shore of this entire ocean and see if i can't find any there we go turtles right there and i'm trying to decide is it easier to just breathe them here or take them back to the base why is you looking at me like that okay i think it should be laying the egg now i don't know what's going on i don't know why there are so many particles right now Jeez. okay we got turtle eggs which we can then take back to our base and grow some brand new turtles grow sounds like they're plants i promise you they're not plants so let's clear out this area quite a bit and get to breeding that was a really weird way to transition that clip uh just just ignore that I looked it up and it turns out I can take four to five in-game days or like well over an hour just for these things to start hatching. And I'm not prepared to wait that long. So while we do wait, let's go ahead and work on our next gear piece. A crossbow. One of Minecraft's least used weapons. But as far as I'm aware, these things are actually pretty powerful. Especially these multi-shot ones. I think these are so cool. As far as I'm aware, I think there's five different enchantments that can go on this thing. That would be the standards, like mending on breaking three. And there we go. If you have a better name for it, let me know in the comments. But this should be our maxed out crossbow. Let's see how this thing... Why did I just do that? Let's see how this thing works outside of our village. Because we currently cannot go in our village. Let's see if we can get this pig. Yes. Okay, it's kind of This thing weak. is very fun, but it's also kind of weak to be honest let's go ahead and check on our turtle eggs in the meantime we have our fifth baby turtle here and if we feed him all the seagrass he should grow up pretty quick there we go that took so so long i don't know why these things are so difficult to get but we finally have our turtle helmet now's our chance to build up a bit of an armory to put all of these different gear pieces in because i'm not gonna have all of them on me all the time and i think it'd be cool to build it I'm not quite sure, to be honest. Mm, I like the idea of it being over here. Let's do it here. The build is definitely taking shape. It's looking great on top of this hill here, but we need to work on this interior where we're gonna store all of the armor pieces. I have a cool design in mind for the floor. I think this could work. We're basically gonna do a ton of really random different wood types all throughout the place and see if we can't make this look halfway decent. Of course, I'm gonna be stripping these too. And yeah, that's the design I'm going for. It's kind of weird, but I like it. Up in this room here to give it a little bit more color, I wanna put some glazed terracotta for the floor like this as a little bit of a rug and i still need a bunch more looms in here they're just so hard to craft because they take string and i don't have a string up here we're gonna have this display stand with an armor stand on it and then a bunch of item frames around it i also want to grab some decorated pots for inside of here and we need to go find some sort of structure in order to get the different pottery shards and trust me i know where some ocean ruins are in my grind to find trends there should be a couple of suspicious gravel over here i brought the stuff to craft a brush and let's brush some of these off and see if we can't get a couple there is one right now perfect and that turtle helmet is making this super convenient let's fill this place out with some details i'm gonna put a bookshelf right here with the new chiseled bookshelves i think i'm gonna replace some of the back wall here with a brighter color actually which may seem like a weird move because it is but you'll see here in a sec there we go that adds a lot more highlight to that spot back there next up i'm gonna throw in a shelf i think on this side just something simple like this can't really put too many details on it but that'll work 
work and maybe just an item frame or something. And we can put my brush there, which we need to enchant in a sec. Next, we're gonna make a pot, put it over here, I guess. That works, that looks good. And then another pot can go in this room too, if we wanted, right here. I'm sure you've seen this before, but we can put a smaller pot in there and then a sapling, that looks cool. But before I put any more details in here, let's get a roof on it. All right, we're gonna try to use birch for these roofs, but first I'm gonna take some of this warped wood, which is a very strange texture but I think it could look not too bad up here as a trim. Then we'll just take our birch around here like this and fill in the middle with the trap doors. These do actually look a lot like a ceiling panel. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty simple, but it's not looking too bad. Next up, I wanna set up a station where we can add trims and netherite to our gear over here with a brewing stand as well in case we wanna make potions or something. It's mostly decoration. Add some shelving on either side here along with two flower pots on either side just like that. On the walls near our armor stand, we're gonna have a bunch of different item frames like that. And for now, I'm gonna store my light show because I'm not really using it at the minute. Fishing rod, crossbow, my netherite helmet can go up there, I guess. And everything else I'm using for right now, we can throw this hoe up here, why not? I threw in a few more details to this build up here. And the interior is looking pretty complete. This will be the perfect spot to start filling up with all our gear. And one last final detail, we'll be putting a big oak tree out here. Let's do it. That tree totally helped complete this build. I made it so that the pathway wraps up here and I'm super happy with how this turned out overall. Now we just need to find the stupid trident already. This is so difficult for no reason. For context, I spent the last two or three hours looking for a trident drown because even if you find a drown holding a trident, there's only an 11% chance it will even drop it. So it is so rare. No wonder nobody uses this thing. Now time for the best part of every video, the drown killing montage. Come on, please, please be the one. Be the one. No! I'm gonna kill two stones with one bird. I'm gonna also search for a sniffer's egg. Oh my goodness, that's crazy timing. The first one I searched. No trident yet, but I did just see this thing on the horizon. Let's see if we can't find some sort of loot in here. And as I approached this mansion on day 995 of this world, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Also, I kind of forgot this is super dangerous, so let's be a little careful here. And ow. Okay, there's one of these. Totem. I just got a totem. Am I going to use it yet? I'm not planning on it, to be honest. That'd be way too easy. Ow. Ow. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's a lot of these things. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop. Stop. Okay, I know what I have to do. I don't want to do this, but I have to. Can they swim? I don't think so. These things are so strong for no reason. <sighs> okay, not the time for a trident. Great right now is if it dropped the trident right about now. No. <gasps> yes! Yes, it was worth it to come here. That took so long. There's so many of these. I can't understand. Okay. 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 No flame sword. No, 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 no. The more I kill, the more just keeps spawning in. I don't understand. There he is. There he is. Don't spawn more. Don't spawn more. Don't spawn more. Why? Oh, there's so many. Well, we got what we came for. Enough of this. I'm heading home. If you made it this far in the movie, everything from this point is completely exclusive content. This was not in any of the videos so far. Okay, I've got to try this out. It's the Riptide one, which means if we do this, we go flying. That's awesome. And I need to get a lot more water features in my world so I can just fly around the world like this because that is so fun. This thing was so hard to get, but I'd say it's totally worth it. That is our final gear piece right there, but I don't think we're quite done. For the last 20 days before we hit day 1000, I want to try to finish up this area here, add a lot more water to make it more trident accessible, like finishing this river, building up some paths, building up some trees, and making this area sort of somewhat complete for day 1000.
It is currently day 999. Which means we have a good 10 minutes left to finish up anything I need to in the world before before we hit day 1000. I'm just replanting this little part of the crop field that I harvested earlier. One of my favorite vantage points of this world is from the top of our starter base, but there's no way to get up there yet. So I'm going to use some ladders to climb up here and install a little platform on the top. I installed this little platform here on top of our starter house. And right here is where I'm going to put this sign and say day 1000 achieved on March 11th, 2024. And as the sun sets on day 999, let's take a look at everything we've created. 